Let me ask you this, Tony. How yeah. do you not just take pictures of these two dudes? Oh, wait, I mean, these, dude, oh man, look. Dude, I these got dudes the, need to be on the, the other end of the camera, bro. I, got the, I probably have more pictures of you guys in my catalog than I have of my kids. <laughs> Like, are we gonna I, edit that out? Like, are we gonna take this uh, one out? This, That's this funny. Is, I'm like, man, like, who are these? Let's see, there's, there's your children. Who are these other older ones? Like, these are my older sons, you know? Like, man, like. What's up, guys? I'm here to tell you this episode is brought to you by CrowdHealth. CrowdHealth is a new, fast-growing, tech-enabled, well-capitalized, community-powered alternative to traditional health insurance. Founded by Andy Schoonover, a proven founder and entrepreneur with a successful track record, including a $100 million-plus exit. By the way, Andy's been on this podcast in the past. CrowdHealth uses the power of crowdfunding, member ratings, unlimited choice and huge cash pay discounts to provide a simple considerably less expensive solution to managing your medical bills crowd health gives you full agency and sticks with you no matter where you move or what jobs you take on you've heard of big pharma but you may not know big insurance is actually the man behind the curtain with 12 of the last 15 heads of the FDA taking jobs in big pharma and 64 percent of its funding coming from private industry don't hold your breath waiting for the government to save the day. It's safe to say our system's broken. It's time to take your well-being into your own hands, and CrowdHealth helps you do just that. You'll pay into your individual account monthly, and if you ever want to leave, you'll simply pay a $250 closing fee, and they will return the entire balance in your account to you because it's your account. Because it's crowdfunded, we all have a vested interest in each other's health. They even cover up to $300 a year in routine wellness visits. So far, for every $100 members have paid into their accounts, an average of only $30 has been paid out. So you can expect to see your money grow in your account over time. Take that, big insurance. Join today by visiting joincrowdhealth.com and using the promo code KLP to pay only $99 a month for the first three months. That's joincrowdhealth.com, promo code KLP. Joincrowdhealth.com, get you some. All right, let's go for it, gentlemen. All right. Um, Check, 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 check. Yes. Testing one, two, three. Let's start let's nice. let's start with this. Tony, tell us yeah. what is going on. Yeah. Because what are you guys up to? Yeah. What is happening? Because you moved to Nashville this summer. <laughs> Next thing you know, you're out in the streets of Nashville taking pictures of things yeah. and people. Yeah. And it's awesome. You're extremely talented, by the Thank way. You, man. I mean I appreciate really, that. really, really good stuff. And then the next thing I hear is Stucky's going around with you and then Mario and then all these other guys. And then this is like a thing you do. You're taking these photo yeah. walks mm-hmm. and there's like yeah. a, it seems to me like there's energy around this right yeah. now. Yeah. So yeah. what's going on? Yeah. I feel like there's critical mass around the idea of photography and seeing the world and presenting the world mm-hmm. in a certain view. Um, you know, at a personal level, photography is an expression of art for me. You know, I did music production before I ever did photography. Well, actually, that may not be true. I think I probably had like a one of those disc film. Like y- y- y'all remember those no, like disc film? You don't know what you're talking about. Man, that was before you was born, man. <laughs> I was back in the and day. And I'm older. Hey, and you're older. Hey, who's, who's older? Is Tony or Mario? I, who, Mar- it's not Mike, I'm, right? Mike is I'm older than oldest. me. I'm the baby. No, you're I'm not. I'm the baby. Yeah. Mark, look. You're I'm, the oldest of this group right here? Sir. I'm 40. I'm 40. What are yeah, you, Mike? both 40. 43. No way. Mike, you're, you're, you're Okay, you're 40, 40 and you're 40? I'm 40. And you're 43. That's right. No way. That, that's, I'm the youngest. You're the yeah. old head. You're the <laughs> old head. <laughs> You might have the wisdom on us. I do. Right. Yeah. But uh, no, I started off with like disc film and like Polaroids 
and stuff like that. But before it was, music? Yeah, way before music. Okay. You know, I was I was real young. I still have undeveloped film, like mm. sitting around in boxes in my house. I mm. should develop it, but you know, that would I, I don't know what I've what's on it. That'd be interesting. <clears throat> it would be interesting. You know, like what what was the twelve year old me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's kind of weird. But um but yeah, I think I started there and then I moved on to like music production as a way of just expressing like the world as I saw it. Uh, photography kind of resurfaced in my life in 2020. And even kind of before that, I, I was really into mobile photography. So I had a Blackberry and that Blackberry, I, I think the Blackberry takes some pretty dope photos in my opinion. I got some really like, I, I got some never, bangers. Never once heard anyone. I got say some that. bangers on <laughs> on that BlackBerry, and I was like, "Man, what camera was this?" And I looked at the uh, the data, and it's like it's a BlackBerry. Mm -hmm. It's pretty wild. So I got I did like my first authentic like street photography on a BlackBerry um, in New York City. Sweet, which was wild, Super and wild. so that was kind of when was this mid teens uh, like mid 2015, 14? Man, I mean I've. I took pictures in New York on film back in the day, but I mean, that's like long gone, but this was probably like sometime in the two thousands. Okay. You know, sometime in the two thousands. So yeah, I, I did that. But 2020 was kind of the year of resurgence for me with photography. It was a way to kind of just get out, take pictures of regular things. I think a lot of people were kind of getting into like, what can I do around the house? 2020, Mm -hmm. pandemic shutdowns, you know, how could I take a picture of a fork and make it look yeah. cool? <laughs> you were the only one. <laughs> like, I that's pretty interesting. Yeah, you know, go in the backyard. <laughs> wow, that's a rock, mm -hmm. you know? So I don't know. I, th I think that was for me, 2020. It was a helpful outlet creatively because I wasn't really doing music as much. And then that just developed. I think it just, it stuck. I don't know why, but it did. And it was just always interesting for me. I asked my wife, I was like, man, do you think I should share some of the stuff? Because I was taking pictures and just enjoying it on my phone. Like, just looking at it. And you know, I'm like, that's pretty cool. And my wife was like, you know, I mean, this is like pretty decent. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, do you think I should like share it? You know, like open up an Instagram account and, you know, put it on there. And she encouraged me to do that. And I started doing that. When was that? Uh, probably like December of 2020. She's so, a keeper, by the way. Yeah, man. Yes, she, yeah. yes. She, she put much love here, here. out there, man. Look, bro. Here, here. Here, you know, by the lean. way, boys, cheers. Way, hey, thank cheers. you for being here tonight. Hey, oh, thanks very for much. Us. I appreciate this. I was really yeah. looking forward to this one. Oh, man, us too, man. Really looking forward to this one. For those that don't know, I get to work with Tony. Hey, can't. See him almost every day. That's dope, dude, man. Like, love it, just, bro. You are like the best dude ever, man. Dude, you're the best person. Great encouragement, So man. I was love really looking forward to this tonight. Mike, Mike, we've been in the same church for a little while. I've never met Mario before. He's obviously one of the coolest dudes in the world already. So yeah. smooth. Um, so December of 2020 20, is when you yep. started um, picks, posting picks, picks by Shep. Nah, it wasn't called that then. It was called like really? shots by shepherd or shot by a shepherd or okay. something like that. <laughs> Did you later change the name to, to picks yeah, by Shep? Yeah, I wanted something shorter. Okay. Because it was, you know, shots. I think it went from like shot by a shepherd to shots by shepherd. And I was like, man, that's there's so many different ways to spell that's, shepherd. That's such a rapper name. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Straight shot rapper. By, shot by shepherd. Shot by shepherd. It's like, yeah, you, you want it to go one way, it can go the other way. Anyway. Um, <laughs> but yeah, picks by Shep was like a, a shorter, more succinct way like yep. Shep is kind of like you know like a shorthand that people have called me you know yep. over time like Shep so I so and if that. anyone's driving down the well they shouldn't do this if they're driving down the road if anyone wants to look it up on Instagram right now it's P-I-X P-I-X yep picks P -I -X. by Shep yep S -H -E -P. and this this account started at the end of 2020 that's right and it's blowing up for you you have like over 40,000 followers yeah. you have like what a handful or two handfuls of like legit actors and actresses yeah, reaching yeah. out to you. No they finding your stuff somehow. No doubt. It's like catching the, the tailwinds out on the algorithms or whatever. Yeah, I mean, the algorithms. You're getting are, you have real traction it. right now on, <laughs> yeah. on your Instagram. Yeah, it's pretty wild. Like I ne I didn't know what to do with that at first because, you know, you're just this one little corner of the internet putting stuff out there. You know, the goal was never really like a platform. The goal was just here is some place I can point people to to, to mm -hmm. share. 
And over time, like, it just started getting some critical mass. More people started getting put onto it. You know, you started breaking certain barriers, and it just started looking like the stuff that you would look on Instagram and say, wow, like, you know, how did, you know, how did that many people notice this account? Mm -hmm. And, yeah, there's just, there's something about the algorithm and, and just consistency. I do post, like, one a day at least. Okay. You know, like, yep. There I is, there I is think that the most element. amazing thing is that at least yeah. <laughs> you were able to do that when Instagram itself is shifting into a more video centric. Yeah, uh, yeah, wow. exactly. That. That's yeah. that's really well. How do you yeah. think that's working? How, how are you making that? Is it just because your photos are so good, or is it because you're getting out in the video through reels, like turning your pictures into reels? Yeah, um, because Instagram is question. all yeah. about the videos. All about the reels right now. Right? All about yeah. the reels and videos. I do reels from time to time just to kind of remind the algorithm. Okay. <laughs> you know, okay. like, like yeah. hey, man, like, you know, I'm, I'm here. <laughs> yeah, you you know? got to feed the algorithm. I do, uh -huh. I do reels. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I think there is something about the niche that I'm in. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where there is like, you know, I do a lot of like black and white, like almost ex basically exclusively black and white on my Picks by Shep account. And it's, it's a certain style of black and white that I just think there's there's a critical mass there. Like, you don't need a million people to be interested in that. You only need, like, you know, a couple 40, hundred. 40,000. You know, 40,000 yeah, 40, people. 000. <laughs> 40 point. Yeah, for, yeah, for, yeah for, is that what, it's 40.2. 40, <laughs> 40, is it 40.2? Uh, yeah, I, it, I okay. check every day. Oh, <laughs> my <son. laughs> Mike's following along. Mike knows what your Instagram, how your Instagram well, is there performing we go. better than you do, Tony. Golly. Yeah, that's, oh, there we go. That's pretty dope. Every, every day Mike wakes up, he's like, man, you're leaving money on the table. <laughs> yeah, so I, I feel like there is there is something about a group of people that are actually interested in a particular like like content. And I do think, uh, you know, the algorithm works best on Instagram when, like, your account is not, I wouldn't say, like, chaotic, but, like, very, like, laser-focused on a uh, specific thing. Okay. You know, so, like, I think if I were trying to do too much mm -hmm. on Picks by Shep, it probably wouldn't fly as well. Interesting. So you think that the Instagram algorithms are picking up on how niche of uh, so. what you're posting? How, I think how, so. How, how niche that is? Yeah. How specific it is? Yeah. And then is rewarding it? I think so, because it's easier to find that. You know, like sure. from an algorithm vantage point, like it's easier to find people who are liking a certain, like, you know, oh, 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 yeah, oh, frame of people. So oh, it's gonna feed, sure, sure, sure. it's gonna feed that content to people. Yes. So like black and white that. would be one differentiator yeah, right. off yeah. off the bat. So yep. then it's like picking up on it's it's feeding you to people who like black and white. Yeah. But then yours is even more yeah. like niche down from there too. Yeah. It's like detail. You know, ah. random objects. And things so because like that. Yeah. you're so clear, you're 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 making Instagram be so clear on what it is that right. you're doing. They know exactly yeah. who to feed the you. The algorithm to. is trained really well. I think mm, that's, that's interesting. I think that's the way it's working. Okay. Yeah. So you've been doing this on the, posting on this account since the end of twenty. Yep. Then you came to Nashville. How did? When did you start doing photo walks in? And how did? How or when did you guys get involved? Yeah. Because now, just to jump ahead a little bit. You guys will sometimes, the three of you and some others even, yeah. will just go down to Broadway and yeah. just be taking pictures. Yeah, that's so crazy. So we, we can, I want to hear, you need to tell people all about I, that. But yeah. how or when did you guys get involved with this? Um, so Tony um, and I had a relationship. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, no, we did you came. work together in music, by the way? Did we ever do anything? We never really, like, fish. well... Uh, there was like maybe like one track we worked on. Like yeah. it was okay. all like the friendship was always like, yeah, like just deeper than that. And then like the music just so happened to like Facts. sweeten yeah. it. You know? I remember coming to the studio. Yeah, that's right. You did. The, the Jolton. And I was the, doing uh, music at the same time. But yeah. Okay. It, it, it happens like that in Nashville where you know, this guy's <laughs> doing something. This guy's yep. doing something. Uh -huh. You don't necessarily come together. But yep. anyway, our relationship, he left. Uh, Nashville in 2011, mm -hmm. 20, 12, 2013. 13. Yeah, 13, baby. And uh, Fifth of July. Came <laughs> back. While he was gone, I kind of transitioned from music to videography and photography. He comes back and shows me this profile on Instagram. <laughs> uh, he, he comes back to visit, and he, I think they're looking for places to stay and all that. We go uh -huh. have a burger. And, like, I can't even remember. I, I just remember you kind of just, like... <laughs> 
like slow motion, like Yo. this is what I'm doing right now. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> and uh, the funny thing is, he didn't know that like I was obsessed with like trying to get a following and like you know be be what he is. Ah. You know, so. <laughs> What what is I? What is I? <laughs> so anyway, and with and with the photography mic or uh, videography yeah. or just in general. In general. Okay. In okay. General. So you want to be that influencer? Is that is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. So I was super shocked. Uh, you had 15k at the time. I remember. Mm-hmm. That's right. I remember, I remember when that. you had 16 as well. <laughs> and 19 <laughs> and 21 and so forth. <laughs> So to forty point two. Forty point two. Um so Mario and I, we were already uh I mean, we can tell our story. I get, we met on Instagram. I was posting uh little videos, uh like vlogs, and um he hit me up in the DMs like, man, let's get together. I'm doing kind of the same thing. Uh we got together, just started talking, got each other's, each other's number, uh started working together with client stuff as well, because he was uh, full time freelancing. I was full time freelancing. Yeah, we hit it off right away. I mean, you know, I think our wives kind of do the same thing. They're in medicine and they went mm. to Harry. It's yeah, like, yeah. man, it's like, really? It's like, oh, did we cool. just become best friends? Lots. Yep. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Lots dope. in common. So uh, with Tony coming back, it was just natural. I, mm-hmm. I think I told you right okay. away, like, bro, I got yeah. a guy. Yeah, you told me. Yeah, my, I knew my about guy, you. It's like it's, instantly. As soon yeah. as I came back, actually, with that day at ML Rose. Yeah. Yeah. When, because that was where we were grabbing burgers and wings at, and you brought up, you were like, man, there's this guy, Mario, man, like, you got to meet him. Yeah. I want you to meet him. So I heard about you, like, oh. before we even moved uh, wow. back officially. Yeah. yeah. So were you doing, were you spending much time taking photos before Tony came back to Nashville? Yep. You were. Okay. So, you, and, but were you doing anything like these photo walks or? Yeah. Um, I've got a, a 40 minute video on YouTube uh, with the GoPro. Uh, with me taking pictures, okay, it's like forty minutes. Okay, so photographers have been doing <laughs> I these. I thought that was gonna like have some other reaction, but such <laughs> <laughs> a long <laughs> video. <laughs> did you have, did you watch the whole thing or no? Uh, I watched a little bit of it. <laughs> a little bit of it. <laughs> you should have had a I Cliff Notes version, man. <laughs> <laughs> so then put the bookmarks in there. <laughs> anyway, uh, it, yeah, it's documented that uh, well I walk around. Okay. He, he documented. That's what counts. You documented that. The aftermath of the, the tornado. The tornado. Okay. Yeah, that, that was, was big. That was, that was big. Pretty big. Okay. The day after, so I make sure you around. put that link down below to my boy's uh, <laughs> video. Yeah. Uh huh. We yeah. could probably do that, or Kobe can probably do that. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> shameless. But I that. knew when Tony was coming back, this the, the twosome was going to be a threesome. Like I, mm-hmm. I knew mm-hmm. this was going to be the crew now. Yeah. Um, and so that's that's how we all yeah. linked. Yeah. That yeah. that first time that we all kind of did a, a Nashville photo walk. We went on uh, what was it Hermitage mm. Avenue first, first mm. basically right yeah right we met like at Crema. uh Crema. La, Crema yeah remember that yeah you sure yeah yes. yeah that's what I remember that <laughs> no it was like five a.m. <laughs> it was like five a.m. in the morning well, it was, bro it was downtown oh yeah yeah. Crema, right by Crema, right, uh, yep, right at first. Yep. Okay. You went for a right photo walk at 5 a.m.? Oh, yeah, that's yeah. Beautiful. crazy. Get crazy. That. You came from Murfreesboro yeah. and were in Nashville by 5 a.m.? Yeah. No doubt. Why? Why so early? <laughs> Get that good light. Get that uh, Get golden that. hour. This is obviously, yeah. in the summertime when it gets light earlier. Uh, I think it was right. summer, right. wasn't it? Was. Why, I mean, Sunrise yeah. was 6 o'clock. So well, you just yeah. get that soft light. Yeah, you get that you know, soft light. It high noon, the sun's straight above. It's casting down all these shadows, you know. Yeah. And it's just coming over the horizon. It's so beautiful. It's like even. Glow, and, you know? ah, yeah, and they call it golden great. hour in the evening. And I think it's blue hour in blue the morning. Blue hour in the morning. Yeah, it was early in the morning. It was cool. So yeah, hmm. it was awesome. That was the first time I met you. Yeah, that was. A, and yeah, we right. saw face to face. And that, that was just a great photo walk, man. Yeah, that was a good hang. Yeah, that was my first time really getting a sense of like downtown mm-hmm. and uh, getting a feel for what that's like to be with you guys like out on the street walking around. Um, discovering Nashville, you know, because Nashville had changed a lot. I was here, you know, I left 2013 and Nashville like blew up in size. Mm. Oh yeah. So like by the time I'm coming back in 2022, you know, I'm like not recognizing, I'm okay. There's the Batman building. Mm. I remember that. Um, You know, there are a couple of things that's like, okay, I remember that, but everything looked different Mm -hmm. as the streets look different. 
I'm just, I'm like, man, I don't know if I remember all this. The Gulch. I'm like, mm. what is this? Like, was <laughs> this even here? Yeah, the Gulch like, got all fancy, man. Yeah, I'm yeah. just like, dude, what is this place? And so, you know, you were my guided tour, and Mario was just like the energy in the crew. You know, love that. <laughs> But that touch of that that East Coast, that New York, you brought oh, with it. <laughs> That's it, son. What's up, New son? <laughs> so, what'd you guys do in that first photo walk? Five a.m. at, at mm-hmm. uh, Crema. What, what we got to it? I mean, did you yeah. go down? Just go down to Broadway. I remember or just start literally. Walking the Tony gets out of the car. <laughs> There's a bottle on the floor. <laughs> you see that? I'm like, that I'm like this guy's intense. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> Everything. He didn't even, I don't think he turned off the car yet. It's like, There's nope. a bottle on the floor. Nope. Like, <laughs> that's that's, that's the that. nature. That's the nature of uh, mostly uh, Tony's uh, photography, I'd say. Um, but like literally being on guard, being ready for any kind of composition, anything that you see interesting. Mm-hmm. You know, so we hit the ground running right yeah. away. Mm-hmm. Hey, we did our daps, and hey, let's go. Bam. You know, we already <laughs> see something, mm-hmm. you know. And what are you looking for? So let's talk mm-hmm. a little bit about the yeah. the niche, the niche that we're talking mm-hmm. about here. What do yeah. you, what constitutes a good shot? When you step out of that car and you see something, what yeah. is it that you see? Good question. Yeah. I see a lot, and I think sometimes what helps is kind of defining, like, what we want to do. Like, today, early today, you know, Stuck was like, man, I want to shoot – um, you know, F8 and up, like, you know, there's there's a way to shoot where, like, the background is blurred or a way to shoot where, like, everything is in focus. And is that what you mean by, what do you mean by F8? What is that? F8 would be, like, where everything, mo- more things are in focus. That's okay. The, the okay. aperture yeah. setting. Yeah, the aperture okay. setting. And, like, so it's like a challenge. It's like a personal challenge. It's like yeah. you, mm. you can put limits on yourself and say, like, I want to shoot this style or I want to look for this kind of subject matter. Like, let's go for street photography today. Let's get mainly, like, people moving. Let's do, uh, like, you know, Mario went out uh, yesterday and was doing, like, long exposure, you know, is where where you kind of capture more light and you can get some of the movement in the shot. You know, like, if you see those shots with, like, you know, uh, back of, like, car lights lights or or something like that, light traces, Yeah, that's, like, long exposure. Like, a little bit blurred a little bit? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, Yeah. things like that are where, like, you can kind of see people moving and, like, you can determine that in the picture. Like, that's long exposure. And so, like, he was, like, you know, he sent out a message I, w- I want to do some long exposure tonight. So it's like there is a sense in which you can challenge yourself to focus on a particular type of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and sometimes that makes the photo walk fun. Um, so it, it just kind of depends. Now, I think that first day we went out, I was just looking for, I, I just really wanted to see what's out here, mm-hmm. you know, and just capture whatever. But I think nine times out of 10, what I'm looking for is I'm looking for things that hang dangle or, st- <laughs> or or like protrude off of the side of really? an object. Yeah, those things just make incredible photos. Like, you know, like a hook hanging off of a, a chain or just a oh, chain yeah. dangling or a piece of rope dangling with frayed edges. Um, you know, a random, you know, rusty bolt. You know? Uh, First of all, you want to barely turn it on. What is that? Just barely. Yeah, Here we go. Off. Is there noise? Is there? Yeah. What is playing right now? <clears throat> That's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the Sonos. <laughs> Who's over here? Is it coming from the TV, Kobe? Must have been my computer. Okay. All right. <laughs> oh, that was that great. is funny. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that was weirding me out because at I first I thought phone, it was like, well, one of you yeah, dudes I'm talking. I'm like, man, we got a ventriloquist here. <laughs> and I'm like, man, that sounds like me. I'm like, what is Yo, this? Teddy. <laughs> Yo, he speaks. I know oh, we got yeah, Abe yeah. on the other <laughs> side. We got MLK on the other side. I'm like, <laughs> but we must appease them. <laughs> we want to make it out here alive. <laughs> we must appease oh, them. Oh, that's funny. Okay. Oh, my Dude, goodness. That is my namesake, by the way. That's my first name, Theodore. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Kent's my middle name. Didn't know that, man. Um, yeah, they didn't want me to be called Teddy, so they just, you know, <laughs> Theo? call me by my, yeah, exactly. Um, TK. All right. All That's right. going to be a new name right there, TK. Hang, dangle, or Hanging, protrude. Dangling, now, are protruding. you saying that just for you personally mm-hmm. in general, or are you saying for uh, picks by Shep? Mm. Yeah, so that's that's more like a, a picks by Shep special right there. Okay, so when I'm that thinking, makes sense. Yeah, when I'm thinking like picks by Shep, you know, and, and again, just to be fair, like that is, I discovered Picks by Shep in the sense, like maybe like how some people are discovering Picks by Shep now, because I think when I really started getting into it and looking at my archive, I had a lot of different stuff. Like, you know, it was a broad interest, you know, that I have in photography in general and just 
what you can take a picture of. You know, street photography is its own thing. Architectural photography. I think right before I left Virginia, I was doing a lot of like architectural photography. I like that. I like corners of buildings, upshots of skyscrapers. That's cool. I like that. I like the glass and the reflections off the glass, seeing like the sky bouncing off the glass of a building. Mm -hmm. I love things like that. Um, <clears throat> you know, that has its own like place in my heart. But I discovered over time like how much I appreciate like the hunt and and to kind of like tell a story by isolating a subject. And the more I shot, the more I saw that I enjoyed that aspect of photography. And so I kind of discovered Pigs by Shep in that in that way. Okay. Uh, just by shooting more and saying, man, I love it when I can see those water beads on that glass or like, man, I love it when I see that chain dangling. Like, that's cool, man. Those links have character mm -hmm. and like, man, we're going to overlook that. And you know, I, it's almost like an extension of like music production for me and like sound engineering where like you're listening to all the little details or like adding that little sound that you may not notice until like the 10th time that you listen to that song. Yep. And you're like, man, there's this little guitar lick that happens mm -hmm. in the background. It only happens one time in the whole song, right. but I never noticed it. Like I always was into that kind of thing. Like yep. the thing that was like the exclusive little sound bite. And so like, yeah, Picks by Shep is kind of like the visual representation of like highlighting the mundane and like, and people connect with it because it's not really like I'm, I'm shooting anything like phenomenal. Like, you know, I'm not going and taking a picture of like this most amazing sunrise with like this seagull winking at you and like doing this thing that you've never uh -huh. seen. It's like, you've actually seen all these things, Yep. but it's maybe causing you to slow down and, and take note of like the dignity that's actually right there in front of you. Mm -hmm. So it's like, man, like this glass is really cool. Like, you know, when I look at that glass, I'm looking at, like the thickness of that glass, the way it's bending light, the way the ice is floating in there, the way the, the it's refract, reflect, refracting the light, like the lines on it. Like there's so much in this glass right here that's so cool. And, you know, there's a way to tell that story where people connect with it because it's like, dude, I could do that too. Like I, I think Pix by Shep is just saying you could do this too. That's, yeah. that's what it's saying. It's mm -hmm. saying like it's, it, you don't have to go to an exotic location just maybe look around yep. and it's stuff there. So when you go out, you're taking pictures of what is interesting to you. And then a subset of those pictures yeah. might wind up on picks by Shep. That's correct. But you're not going out and only taking pictures that you know will wind up on yeah. picks by Shep. That's right. Yeah. Now, what are you guys naturally drawn to? Like what is sort of the, the center point of you guys's focus when you're out taking pictures? I typically tend to just look up. Um, I'm always, finding myself looking up at buildings. I like mm. architecture as a building, but I'm still in the process of finding my voice, if, if that makes any sense. Um, I do like movements. Um, I feel like this this world is vast because previously I, I was just, I've just been taking pictures of people, you know, for money, you know, like portrait photographer, take event photography. And after a while, you know, you're just almost like an order taker, you know, all right. I'll pay you this money. Go take pictures of this. And as a creative person, I got really boring to me, you know. So I just wanted to express my creativity in a different way. And I didn't even have an Instagram to post my fun pictures. I, I didn't post my pictures anywhere. I just took pictures and mm. I edited them. I was satisfied. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> do you have an Instagram account now? Not, now I do. Um, <clears throat> what is it? It's Viz by Mario. V I Z. By Mario, so M A R I O, I -O. yeah. And do you have an, a specific Instagram account for this? It's Picks by <laughs> Stuck. Get some. Oh <laughs> yeah, it's also on the back of my hoodie. Get it. Oh yeah, P I X. Picks by Stuck. Yeah. Nice. So Picks yeah. by Stuck was like directly inspired by this guy. <laughs> love that. Love that. It's dope. I love it, bro. I love that. Um, and what do you gravitate towards with your photography? And honestly. Honestly, I, I kind of just copied Shep, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm cool to say that because I'm a, I'm a video guy. I'm a film guy, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and naturally, my photography prior to, uh, you know, 
uh, seeing Tony's work was mostly like something that you might see in a video or in a movie, you know. So I'm really big on composition and lighting and things like that. Whereas he's big on isolating this cup, which has a really nice backlight on it right now. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's your camera, bro. There's the camera right there. <laughs> but I thought, you know, let me start a start an account. Man, you like the Godfather in here right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're just followers of the ship. Yeah. Hey, I'm um, just followers of the Christ. <laughs> let me start an account and uh, well, just see what I can do. Or whatever. Yep. Um, and so. Being able to go out and kind of see what he's seeing, like what I, I like his style. I like the sub, the things being isolated. I mean, the words printed on this cord here. Mm. He, would, he would make that the subject, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I started doing that in my walks, uh, whether it's like a drainage grill or uh, you know, like a paint chip off of a street light or something. That who knows. Yeah. Um, it, it just kind of refreshed. It, it was. It's just been really refreshing and, and therapeutic to, to just do something different. Now, when you you mentioned taking portraits of people, they pay you and say, "Go basically take this picture," and it's kind of like order taking. And this is like, I mean, you guys are out there. This is highly, highly creative, right? In terms of photography, it doesn't seem like it gets a lot more creative than this, right? I mean, this is you, yeah. you guys are out it's there just making straight your own freestyle. magic, whatever. It's, yeah, it's just straight freestyle. Whatever yeah. is in your mind. Yeah, you can, you can do. And I don't have somebody telling me you need to take a picture of this. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. to me, that's liberating. Freedom. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. is this does this then fall under kind of a creative endeavor where you're just going to do this because mm-hmm. it's therapeutic? You enjoy Absolutely. it. It's mm-hmm. satisfying. It's fulfilling. Yeah. But it doesn't necessarily send you cash back. Like if you go take someone's portrait and they pay you a few hundred bucks for that. Mm-hmm. Not right? yet. So yeah. is, is the idea just you're just going to do what you love, enjoy it. If it ever becomes something, then you know, then great. And if not, you know, it's no, it's no harm, no foul because you're doing what you love. Precisely. But yeah. okay. there's also a benefit to doing what you love as well, because you then hone the skill that you have to then go take pictures for money. So you're, you're actually sure. exercising that muscle as well. So it's a, it's a yeah. double edged sword, I guess. Yeah, that, that makes yeah. sense. So if, what would be the, the way this could be monetized mm-hmm. in the future? Like you sell prints. the pic- prints, you is sell one the print. Yep. Okay, okay. Yeah. And when you say print, you're talking about like a physical. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that could look like you know you just get this awesome shot. I mean, it's like that shot doesn't happen again because that was at that point in time. That's, right. that's oh, the only man. time ever that yeah. that shot is going to exist ever. It just doesn't again. Mm-hmm. And you got it, and then it's it's just something about it's just right. You could sell it as a print. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think that's one way. Prints are one way. Um, <clears throat> You know, and I, I think a lot of people are starting to get into that, you know, like having something in hand. Like, I think, you know, there are many things in society that are going digital, which actually I don't think is a bad thing. I actually think it's a good thing. But going digital increases the value of certain, like, hand, you know, hold it in your hand, physical items. You know, so, uh, you know, vinyl, wax, for instance, is like a commodity because we can Spotify everything. Like, so being able to hold this piece of artwork in your hand has a unique value. Same with prints. So like, that's, you know, that's like one element. One element that I'm finding is almost like the the people that are, are going to make money off of this are probably not... Um, selling to other people like you know on my you know instagram account i have a lot of photographers so most photographers are not going to buy a picture of something that i've taken i mean that's just kind of i mean mm-hmm. you know it's i got my list <laughs> you know, it, i could i could see a small like percentage of people doing that but that's probably not like other photographers are just more interested in like the art the creativity the inspiration and so, like, you know, to other photographers, maybe, like, the, the thing I might be able to sell you is, like, presets to, like, a program to, like, make okay. your pictures look like mine. Like, that okay. Like that's yeah. that would be, like, one type of thing. But the other thing is more just, like, building a community around, like, a, a specific brand to make other larger brands notice 
that you can attract a certain type of person. So like the, the value, for instance, like if we talk monetarily, like the value of like my picks by ship account is not the direct sales, but the fact that I have probably, I mean, out of those 40, however many thousand people that are on there, it's probably like 30,000 of those are probably photographers. Yeah. And so a company like, like I'm a brand ambassador for Tamron, which basically means Tamron gives me like thousands of dollars of free stuff and I use it. And then I tell people about it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my value as a platform is not in direct sales to the people, but my value is to a larger company that is interested in the people that are flocking easily around, like around my brand. So it's just easy to find 30,000 photographers. They're sitting on picks by ships, mm -hmm. you know, account. So mm -hmm. if he starts talking about this particular piece of gear, then that's valuable to a company. So, you know, that's, that's another avenue. And that's the avenue that I've been kind of taking advantage of. Um, you know, Tamron's a great company. I think they make like really quality lenses that are affordable, um, you know, that don't really, they don't fudge on quality. Like it's like a really good lens. Um, and, you know, they send me, I mean, I think I've gotten at least three lenses from them and, and other things, you know, you know, when I post and, and, you know, let people know that I'm using Tamron uh, gear, there's just a lot of incentives and things like that that I get with Tamron. And, you know, that's, that's the value of mm -hmm. an account like mine and a platform. So like, yeah, I, I think that's for me that I've, I've kind of taken that route. And then I just think the, the value is kind of like the, the art itself, like the celebration of art. Like, you know, I'm at a point now where I'm not just trying to build like picks by Shep, but I have like a kind of lateral step, something called art of the, the art of the mundane. And so, you know, it's, I'm wearing the hoodie, Stuck's wearing the hoodie. Um, it's a whole nother Instagram account that I'm slowly building. Mm. Um, and what it is, it's a community for photographers. And you Make know, sure I'm following that account. Yeah, the yeah, Art of Mundane Mag on Instagram, and the website is Art of Mundane Mag dot com. On Twitter, Art of Mundane Mag. On Twitter, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's just basically it's a you know it's different types of experimentations in the celebration of the the art of the mundane. Like most photographers are not taking epic bangers. I mean, that's just like regular life. Like most of life is not one epic banger after the next. It's a lot of like really solid, like ordinary stuff. Small and bangers. Yeah, small uh -huh. bangers, you know, that are like worth celebrating and worth the platform. And so. Whose pictures wind up on Art of the Mundane? Uh, anybody's. Okay, really. so it's not yeah. just yours. Yeah, not just mine. Yeah. So do they do they DM you pictures or how do they, how some, do you. Sometimes I just drop in and take it. Okay. And credit them. And okay. because, you know, and like they're like with a screenshot them. off of their. Oh, yeah, I'll screenshot okay, off. And, yeah, I've never had a problem with that. Most people because they, you know, I go in on my picks account and I big it up and they're like, oh, wow. You know, I yep. got this, yep. <laughs> you know, this this shout out. And yep. your from, focus is a smaller channel. Yeah. And it's right I'm now. looking for like smaller, yeah. like folks that have like two, three hundred followers. Oh, OK. You know, okay. some might have a couple thousand, but like. You know, and, and there's like, I did one recently with a guy named Jason Hunter, who is a photographer actually out from Virginia, um, who uh, we met each other on Instagram, never got a chance to shoot together before I left Virginia, but he's got like a huge platform. It was like a hundred thousand. And, um, you know, I kind of like, you know, I hit him up and I was like, Hey man, I'm doing this whole art of the mundane. He, he's like famous for taking pictures of like corners of buildings. Mm. super random stuff and he like celebrates the idea of like regular stuff and he wants to like inspire photographers to take pictures no matter where you're at yeah. if you live out in the middle of nowhere like you're not at a disadvantage like the guy who's in new york city doesn't have like more of an, of an advantage when it comes to really like seeing art and everything mm -hmm. you know because the corner of this kmart building is pretty awesome mm -hmm. the corner of this this auto zone and so like he's got a following hundred thousand people doing stuff like that. Okay. And so I never got a chance to shoot with them before leaving Virginia. But, you know, I was like, Hey man, well, we never got a chance to shoot. So how about you throw me some photos for the art of the mundane and let me do an interview with you. So we recently oh, cool. did a, a five questions interview. It's like five questions. I ask, um, you know, every photographer on video. Um, it's actually, it's a print version. So text. 
that's oh, okay. yeah so okay. art of mundane mag.com you can check that out they went with mario once coming up with sticky stuck oh cool pretty soon but yeah so like you just questions. like send them the five questions yeah. it's the same five questions same every five time questions yeah they type out concise answers to yep. each question and then you post that yeah that's on right art of the mundane yeah. okay let's talk about um creative endeavors just for a little bit mm. because this is something that the i have bumped into this most uh poignantly i think with this this very podcast because at the end of the day, this go round, I'm just doing it because I enjoy it. You know, it's like right. I, if I really had to justify its time, it'd be like, Ew, yeah. <laughs> right? You know, like it would I be hard. That. Feel that? <laughs> it would be hard to if I had to like really give a pragmatic answer on how much time I'm spending doing this. Yep. Um, I I wouldn't be able to like you know to do that. Yeah. Now maybe that's not always the case, mm-hmm. but. That's the case right now. But the truth is, this is like, this is like my little creative endeavor. And I bumped in and out of that various times over the last 10 years, really like, because what you can do damage to a creative endeavor, if you put too much pressure on it and think like this Mm -hmm. needs to, I have to justify this monetarily, you know, or you feel guilty about the amount of time you're spending on or something like that. And I'm sure there are times, you know, like I can't just do a, you know, be down here and not have a job. You know what I mean? No doubt. Um, But so how do you guys think about Mm. creative endeavors like this? Like you're not getting paid to go take these shots on the street, Yeah. but you're, you're getting up at, I mean, good grief, three 45, 4 AM driving downtown Nashville, 5 AM, you know, an hour or two or three, whatever time Mm -hmm. you spend on the street and you're driving back to Murfreesboro. Like, you know, these things take time. So how do you guys think about, creative endeavors that aren't paying you directly in the moment? Mm, that's a great question. You just made me want to quit. No, I'm teasing. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but seriously, uh, this whole thing for me, it's a, just like you said, a creative endeavor. Um, it is an expression of my creativity. Mm. And so, you know, like, it's almost like saying like, if I don't, let it come out. If I don't mm. birth it, I'm going to die literally. Cause mm. I'm going to die with this thing inside of me. I need mm. to, it needs to be that motivating for me to like get up at 5 AM to, yeah. to go drive downtown. And of course I have two kids, little kids. So it needed to be at 5 AM for me to get <laughs> back by seven and, and still make breakfast for everybody. Mm-hmm. And so, um, Oh, so we, ta- we, we take, we take those, <laughs> we take those things. Yeah. Um, and we carve out the times for the things that we love to do, you know? Yeah. And so um, it's not paying any money now, but man, I feel so much alive and it's so therapeutic because I'm able to express my my art somewhere, yeah. you know? So That's good. And I see that is really, really inspiring to me. That's great, man. We were talking about this, I think, at tr- yeah. one of our meetings yeah. in the last couple months about just how inspiring it is when someone does something. Yeah that they just love and enjoy. Yeah. There's something about that to me that's really inspiring. Like I won't go take pictures, you know, like that's not a thing that I'm good at or, yeah. or, or whatever. It doesn't matter. Like your thing is pictures, but you saying exactly what you did is really inspiring to me. There's like something inside of me that like, is like, um, like it's like energy, you know, yeah. it feels energized yeah. when someone just does something because they really enjoy it. Even if it's not, you know, like, like paying money in the moment. And in our society now, everything's so, you know, practical and financially driven. Like it can be like, if you can't justify, at least I feel this way a little bit. Maybe it's just, maybe it's just me and not everyone feels this way, but Mm -hmm. you know, I feel like if I can't justify it, then I almost feel like a little bit bad about it. You know? Yeah. 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 I mean, unless we're talking about like 15, 20 minutes here or there, then who cares? But if it's like hours a week, Mm -hmm. there's something in our, Western society is yes. like, man, everything needs to have a number yeah. to it. And the if it doesn't have a number, you're wasting your time. Like, yeah. Mm. You know? Yeah. Um, Capitalism so. at its best. Sure. Yeah. yeah. It's, yep. you, sometimes you feel that, you know, um, but, you know, and that's why it's more of a hobby than anything else because everybody else has yeah. uh, something that they do for money. You know, mm-hmm. I know you work, you work, I work, I have my freelance uh, business that I do. And, you know, sometimes there isn't much coming in at the time but you know uh the art has to has to find a way to get out at some point yeah for mario and i I think it's it's truly an escape from work 
because this is our job <laughs> also. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, definitely wanted to bring that up. You know, we're dealing with clients, people that are telling us what to shoot and how to shoot it and when to shoot it, you know? Mm-hmm. So I, I think I can speak for us both and say, you know, we need that, those yeah. creative endeavors. Mm-hmm. We need to separate the two. Like, wait, why am I in this? Am I in this for money mm-hmm. or, or do I really enjoy this? Like, yeah, I literally have to ask myself that almost every day. <laughs> yeah, that's good, man. <laughs> because the clients are, are, you know, it's it's a demanding. Are you doing work for hire, basically? Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. It's yeah. draining. You know, right. mm-hmm. do they like it? Do they mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. my art, my creativity? Yeah, mm-hmm. it's really tough. So we mm-hmm. have to, you know, going out and walking around and just shooting yeah. whatever, man. That it, yeah. it is a release. It is like mm-hmm. you gotta yeah. have it. Talk yeah. about Mike. Yeah. Mike, talk about when you actually feel like connected to an edit and you Mm. hand it to a client oh gosh and (laughs) and they completely rip it apart and you have to be like so i have to start over again and then it's like the worst talk about that man that must be awful yeah yeah exactly what you just said there Mm. is i i have so much respect for you guys are in this space that can like pull through something like that yeah because I don't know how. You, a lot of times we don't we don't we don't, we don't make it. We don't make it sometimes. <laughs> yeah. I, have, like it, I have to talk about. I'm like, man, man, you got paid. <laughs> yeah. You got you got to go ahead and bang this edit out. Oh my yeah. Three weeks later, honey, he's still at it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, exposing me. <laughs> but that, but that happens but to me. It's tough. It's, it's yeah. tough. It's like you pour your heart and your creativity. You like you see this whole thing with the music with the ah. Oh, you just. Put it out. It's like, man, it's so simple. It was, and then it's like, no, I don't like it. Change the music. This is too fast. This is too slow. It's like, <sighs> it's like someone paying you to go yeah. on a walk no and capture something that they might like. Yeah. And then go on that walk and feel that pressure. Yep, feel that pressure. <laughs> right. And it's like, it's a lot like, you know, before, you know, doing music when I was in the music business, you know, yeah. It's like anytime you take on a, a creative endeavor, it's, it's more than manual labor. Um, it oh, is yeah. an expression. Oh, like yeah. there's a sense of which, you know, it feels like you're like sending your children out into the world, mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. you know, and it's, it's an expression. Like I wouldn't put this out there if I didn't like deeply like this mm. and right. feel like this represents some like mm. several points of my preferences, likes and things that I enjoy. It's like cooking, mm. you know, like I put this on the plate because I think this tastes great. Yeah. So when you're like, man, the flavor's off, I don't like this, this, da, 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 it's, it offends you personally because it's like, man, like this is an expression of me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is not just a thing I did. If I just painted a wall, you're like, paint the wall red. And I painted the wall, wall red and you're like, I hate red. Psst, okay, great. <laughs> you know, like that's not an, ex- an extension of myself. Right. But if you said paint a mural on that wall. Yep. And I have this vision for what this would, could look like. And there's something that's, that represents beauty to me and, you know, represents some part of my life. And maybe that beauty has been shaped by certain experiences. You rejecting that feels more like uh, you're rejecting the validity of the, those ranges of experiences and things that have shaped why I think that's beautiful. Mm-hmm. You know, and so it's, it's yeah, it's a lot harder when that's your bread and butter and like it feels like yeah that, you know people are judging not just your work but an extension of like how you think you as a mm-hmm. curator you as the you know the one the, the total package that brought that art to surface yeah Crazy. yeah but also i don't know who you guys are doing work for but is it also kobe do you mind just poking your head out this door and telling them to stop playing basketball out there <laughs> <laughs> Speaking yeah. of expression, it's ball, my kids ball playing is basketball yeah. right outside Balling. the garage when we're there doing we podcasts. I mean, <laughs> ball is life. They know they're not. They're, their room life. is literally above us, so That's they know they're like, great. can't jump, <laughs> don't run around, don't <laughs> slam your bedroom door, don't yell. The thing I never thought to mention was, don't you play didn't basketball. Specify, don't shirt off. It's cold. Oh, really? That's how you know. I'm glad that he wanted to practice. That's how you know you're in it, right? Did you tell him to quit? Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, Game over. Man. Your but, dad uh, said stop. Yeah. But I don't know who you guys are doing work for, but also is it not um, it's is it not common that you are showing your work to someone who's approving it who is not a creative? And so if someone is um, 
because I this took me some time with just being in kind of the the business world with having things done in marketing. That was what I would bump into the most. It took a little bit of time to realize, oh, this is actually not about my personal preference. This is right. about what the brand is about, oh, yeah. what the brand mm-hmm. is standing for, what the brand is trying to communicate and convey. Mm-hmm. So you need to approve everything through that filter. It really mm-hmm. doesn't matter what Kent Lapp prefers here. This right. is like, what is the brand and is this on brand or not? And mm-hmm. so is that a, a point yeah. of frustration where you, where you guys yeah, are like, they're take, just using their personal preference and that's right. really irrelevant. Take you out of it. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And so creative endeavor, I need it. You know, I'm texting him. When are we getting out? <laughs> yeah. you know yeah. and i think i think there's a, a point at which that balance changes because <clears throat> even like when we're talking about you know brand alignment what we're really talking about you know, at some level you know it's you know, we are curating ourselves for the benefit of others mm-hmm. like you know at all levels I, you know we're thinking through the lens of how can i serve and help others accomplish goals that they want you know, and that they're after. So there's an aspect of life that's just that. Now, but when we start like going into more like, you know, at, at the business side of things, and like when we're talking about brand alignment, at one level, brand alignment has more to do with like, who's the bigger brand? Because if you get, let's say you're, you're working on a, you know, say it's an album. And if you have like the most, like the world's, greatest producer with like, you know, an amazing artist whose brand is the one that we're aligning to. Ooh, you You mean like the producer or the artist? Yeah. Yeah. If it's, if it's a producer that's lesser known, then brand alignment swings in the direction of the bigger, you know, entity. But if the the bigger and the more well-established that that particular, you know, producer is, the more brand alignment is about that artist kind of orbiting around sure. that, that producer. I would have never guessed that. Actually, yeah. I would have I would have just thought it's always the artist. Yeah. No, it's it's whoever's the bigger brand. And so like it's like, you know, you listen to, you know, classic albums and you know, it, I'll speak like in hip hop, you almost know who that producer is. If it's a well known producer, you're gonna know who that producer is the second the beat drops. Right. You're like, that's their sound. Mm-hmm. You know, and that artist is meeting that producer. And, and in fact, I mean, it's to your advantage to not make that producer sound different hmm. than that producer sounds because actually your your product is going to sell and benefit from aligning to that other brand. So I think there are certain projects, you know, that creatives will take in which like your brand is the stronger brand. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it, it, that could just be you're working with, and and I would say this, there's a lot of people who don't realize that in the creative space, like maybe they'll reach out to a photographer. And the reality is that like, you might be getting a Mario, you might be getting a Snucky and it's like their brand, their style, their, their, you know, curation of color, you know, and, and style and approach. Like they actually have a stronger brand mm-hmm. and it might actually be in your benefit to, to yeah. align mm. that particular you know project along the lines of, of the strength of their brand. But if you don't know that, if you're not aware of that and you know, you're just, and, and I, I worked with artists that were like that, you know, in music production where like I was, you know, as a producer, I had a bigger platform and a sound and a, in, in a, in a brand that was just bigger than the artists I was working with. But if that artist didn't understand that, and then they were trying to force me into their mold. It's it doesn't work for anybody at yep. the end of the day because that's yep. not my strength. Yep. Neither is that the strength of my brand, and you know, it, it just it ends up falling flat. And so mm-hmm. I do think that you know you, you got to eat right. So like there's going to be a lot of times where you're making art, taking photos, and doing edits for people who are you know, maybe their brand is not as strong as your brand, but okay, maybe, you know, for this project, I kind of have to swing that in their direction, but that is draining, especially when you're aware of the fact that you probably have a stronger brand yep. than that person that's actually paying you. And and mm-hmm. you're moving into their orbit versus, 
you know, maybe them leaning a little bit more into your orbit. And so, you know, I think, you know, those are all factors that, that go into it. But yeah, I mean, it's like at the end of the day, you got to pay the bills. Sure. You know, which is why it's helpful to remember that like art is not first and foremost, like a, a matter of commerce, like beauty, beauty is a category that's got its own value in it. Beauty and enjoyment like is, is a value in itself. It's not monetary. Like there are, there are things in this world that just the reality of beauty, diversity, you know, colors, like it, in a sense, like it's not even necessary. Mm-hmm. Like we don't need, I mean, you know, I do black and white photography. Like you don't need mm-hmm. color, color, but color is great, mm-hmm. but you don't need it. You know? So like this world like has color and texture and all this stuff. That's really not of the essence of necessity but is of the essence of, of like enjoyment. Mm-hmm. And so like art it so has much a way. actually. Yeah. yeah. Actually, when you really think about it, what we have on this planet that has to do with enjoyment. Yeah. Over, over necessity yeah. or enjoyment in addition to necessity. Yeah. It's a lot. Yeah, It's a lot. Like it's we don't lot. need all these different types of apples. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Look, you yeah. like it, you Girl. know, you know, like gala apple is the greatest of all Ooh. time. <laughs> honey Chris yeah, boy. I don't even know how to say Hitting it. Honey Chris. I thought you were talking about uh, MacBook Pro and <laughs> iPhones. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the gala, bro. What is hey. the um what is what is it about the mundane that is attractive yeah. to you? Yeah. What are you trying to pull out there? What are you yeah. trying to show? That's great, man. What are you trying to to tell. I think I have a, I, there's like multiple points of reference that I have with mundane. So like at one level, um, there is just a sense in which everyone intuitively knows that most things are not like phenomenal and sensational in how they kind of present. You know, you wake up in the morning and you're surrounded by like thousands of like ordinary moments when you know just at a normal human level you look back in your life and you know if you're on your deathbed you're not thinking of just like all the you know high moments Mm -hmm. you're really thinking about just like the time that you spent with people you love like the 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 small moments the little things like you know you're not like if you're on your deathbed you're not saying man i want to go to disney once more <laughs> you know that's true. like you're not thinking that you're like man if i could just have a little bit more time we said i want to work harder <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, you know, like we don't say that we say we, we like tend to point out these like mundane ordinary little moments because you realize they're just like the carriers of so much of like the joy of life so like at that level just that, i resonate with that at another at a one step deeper than that at a personal level you know, I, I see myself and then I look around at people around me and the most amazing things about people around me are the ways that they can inject like uh, like big life into small moments. So think of like, you know, hanging out, grabbing, grabbing a bite with a friend. And I mean, like eating is normal. But like eating with that friend and like, the you know, just the, the joy and the, the interaction, like that moment has a lot of bandwidth for like creating memories. It has bandwidth for, for like, you know, deep bonds. But it's like a very ordinary activity. Mm-hmm. Right. And so, you know, we know that at a personal level and, you know, a, a, as a as a Christian, I think of the reality of. Jesus, and I believe, like when I look at what I believe as a as a Christian, and cue I look at soft, cue to soft music. You right know, here. there we go. Hit that soft music. <laughs> I know you can play you the know, keys. I'm so, so yeah, we should have brought like, that keyboard, baby. I got, <laughs> got, chord in my got that chord. Like I think of Jesus, and I think of like the, I'm. He is the person that I am most impressed with, like most amazed by, and. Like his life was, you know, something that a lot of people could have slept on. Like, you know, he wasn't looking for the biggest platform. He took the hardest route, you know, like, you know, even people that were following him, like didn't quite get the moves that he was making. Like it didn't seem to like add up like this. These are not the things you do if you like want to be like great. You know, the 
first shall be last, the last shall be first. And then, like, he gravitated towards, like, people who were, like, overlooked in society. And that's why I resonate a lot with that. You know, like, man, like, uh, the greatest one on earth finding, like, people that seem to be, like, outcasts. Mm -hmm. And, like, that theme, I resonate with that theme. Or, like, you know, it's like the Bible teaches, like, Jesus winning through death. Like, saving through giving himself up. Like, those categories are mind-boggling. And then, like, you look at the history of Christianity in the world, and, like, you just see a lot of people that are on the receiving end. Like, they're not the ones that are in power. They're not. They're just, like, the ordinary, the regular. You know, and that just seems to be a theme that at every level, for me as a believer to just, like, experience in the world around me, there is just so much about ordinary things. That are, that are actually like full of life mm -hmm. and momentum and just grandeur. And so like those, I, I tend to, and I see myself as someone who's just a regular dude who has, um, you know, something given to me that's great. And like, you know, there's like all these amazing things in unassuming packages. And I think with my art, like when I talk about like the art of the mundane or when I, you know, take pictures of random things, I'm thinking about, I'm almost like cluing people into like the fact that this is like beautiful. Yeah. Like the world is made, like every now and again, you might get like the thing that is amazing because it looks amazing and it's awesome. But nine times out of 10, man, you're going to bump into like 10,000 quote unquote, ordinary people, ordinary moments, ordinary things that are actually kind of like secret passages into something that's like really amazing. Mm -hmm. So what if, what if like through a picture of a cup, you know, that's, you know, sits on the table, everybody has a, a cup, everybody drinks water or something, you know, what if you can start looking at that cup as like, man, that's like more impressive than, than I really thought. It's simple but it's amazing. What if you started thinking through life like that? You know, what if I looked at my neighbor and said, you know, man, this is not just a, a guy down the street, but man, like, dude, you're awesome. You're amazing. Mm -hmm. Like there's so much more in you than maybe other people might notice. Like you're a lot more like wonderful than maybe on the surface I would be tempted to, uh, to think and like, what if we just slowed down? What if we did that as just a way of life? We just slowed down and paid attention to what's actually around us. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, and your pictures. My theory is 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 that you know the the mundane mm. combined with your skill set of mm. making it beautiful. Mm. That's that's the recipe right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the recipe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's the theory I think behind his growth. Mm. Like you said, a cup. Well, it's not just a cup. Like, mm -hmm. I've been with this guy when he takes the pictures of a cup. <laughs> <laughs> it might take him five minutes to take a picture of a oh, cup. Oh, really? <laughs> or okay. it could be just a snap and go. Mm -hmm. But he's looking for the angle, you know, like the object, the subject of focus. It is what it is. It's mundane. It's cool. But shine a light on it a certain way. Mm. Center it in the frame. Mm. Blast everything that's in the in the in the frame into oblivion and, and blurry you know and uh yeah man the, the beauty of the mundane yeah that's, uh -huh. that's where it's at. yeah it's uh -huh. so Resolute. relatable yeah yeah it is to, to everyone i feel mm -hmm. so yeah that's dope and is this something that you guys had maybe subconsciously been incorporating in your photography also and then something kind of resonated when you noticed what what tony was doing absolutely or, really Absolutely. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Well, I guess I should elaborate. You should elaborate. Yeah. Well, I just think to yeah to, when you first said this to me, this resonated with me immediately mm. because it it's like it does come back to noticing these little things. Yeah. And the example I always think of with this is my grandfather, my dad's dad. Mm. And this is like a human example of what you're talking about. Not fancy, not flashy, not wealthy. Mm -hmm. Took care of grandma, took care of his kids, yeah. did well. Um, you know, you know, there was a little bit, I think there was a little bit of money for his kids, you know, when he died at like 93 or 96. I mean, there the dude was really old. Um, 
good age. And maybe even like a you know a few hundred bucks for the grandkids or something like that. It wasn't mm-hmm. not wealthy, but I think he I will like he is going to be remembered. Yeah, long, yeah, much longer than other people mm-hmm. who had you know all the money in the world, so to yeah. speak. And just approached life differently. Like he yeah. was so faithful it's and it's diligent it, and wise yeah. and godly. Yeah. And like it was like he somehow had a bead on what like life was really about. Mm-hmm. And he just stuck to that. Yeah. Man. And he didn't try to like yes. go outside that circle really. He yeah. was very content yeah. and he just stuck with it. And yeah, there's something about that. Mm-hmm. You would go to their house and it was like peaceful. It like seemed like it was in rhythm. Right, yeah. it was like it was a place you wanted to be. Mm. No electronics, really. Like you weren't yeah. there for like the the um, amusement or the entertainment or whatever. You were there because it was like it felt like whatever vibes were happening here were mm. it was resonating. It was right. That's right. Yeah, it was very basic. It was very mundane. Yeah, man. But it's like it's gonna. I you just feel like it's, it, yeah, yeah, absolutely. We, can, we connect with that at a real human level, and I think you know, I, I think that's what people are picking up on because. I don't think I don't think there's many people walking around just saying like, man, I am, you know, the most awesome thing ever. Everything that I do is like the most awesome. I think most people, when they're honest with themselves, are like, man, you know, I'm just one fish in the ocean. Mm-hmm. You know, like most mm-hmm. people are walking around, they feel like I'm overlooked. I'm, you know, and whether you know th- that's the ego. I'm sure all of us have ego, right? Like, but just at a human level, just thinking of this in a positive way. Like, I think most people feel like, man, we're in a big world where, you know, I'm probably going to get overlooked. You know, you, you work on your, you know, whatever you do, your job. You know, there's a there's hundred things you're doing that really never get noticed. You know, there's, you know, your relationships, your friendships. Yeah, life is just full of all those things. And I think the idea of, like, celebrating, like, the beauty of the mundane. Like is is in a way it's like it, it is a glimmer of of hope that says, you know, if I'm that fork <laughs> on the table, if I'm that screw, you know, hanging out the wall, <laughs> if I'm mm-hmm. that chain dangling, maybe that's like that's that's me in some mm. way, you know, like really there yeah. there is an angle and a perspective on this in which like there is actual beauty in that. Yes, just last weekend I was um, I. I'm on the carnivore diet right now and I had ordered some meat online and it came and it was like a variety of different things. Nice. And I do, I do not know why I enjoy this so much, but it was like grass fed, pasture raised. I was making uh, like my own meal for like two to three hours, probably mm. two hours, easy, two and a half hours, mm. having the best time, listening to music. Just like, I can't cook anything, you know, <laughs> except for, for meat. And something about, it's very weird, but something about good, Meat. I don't care if it's steak or ground yeah. beef, whatever it is, like mm-hmm. preparing it, eating it. Yeah. I mean, I'm just like, I love it so <laughs> yeah. much. I don't know why I like it so much. It's very strange, I, but I like it a lot. But um, mm. what what I was thinking about later, it occurred to me, is I wonder if part of the reason that I enjoy it so much is because I feel very directly connected to the ecosystem mm of life. I feel yeah. very connected to like the cycles of life mm-hmm. on this planet. Yeah. And then I was thinking, man, I think that's at the end of the day, that's one of like the, the most profound feelings you can experience mm-hmm. to feel like you are actually part of yeah. what's going on for, mm-hmm. you know, a hundred years or whatever, to, whatever time you have here. Yeah. Like you, you, you give and take, you know, like yeah. s- s- some living creature had to die for me to eat that meat. Yeah. And so I took in that instance, but then I give in other way. And it's like mm-hmm. to participate in the cycle of life. When you really think about it, it's a very sacred yeah. experience. No doubt. Like that's like, there's a lot going yeah. on here, like in the universe and in the grand scheme of things. And we get to participate in it. Yeah. I mean, even just breathing, like we're mm-hmm. so dependent on what's yeah. around us. Like mm-hmm. we have two minutes if we stop breathing or three yeah. and it's all over, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. like we're all participating in this yeah. life together and, great, and most of us don't even notice it. Yeah. It just goes over our head. That's right. We just wake up and go about things and it just all gets missed. Yeah. You know, and I, and too I feel much like of it those gets are, missed. those are the, that it gets missed mm-hmm. is what we're talking about. And I feel like, you know, the, 
to kind of loop it back to like photo walks. Yeah. You know, like when we're on these photo walks and, I, you know, we, I do them by myself sometimes, sometimes stuck by himself, sometimes Mario. But when we go together, there is like this kind of um, dynamic of like helping one another notice things. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. You know, like in, and I think that's a part, like even together, like when we observe together, we're more aware of like those things that are around us. Yeah. And sure. it is, it's just, and it's great. And even when we take the same picture, it's a, different like, interpretation the, it's a it. whole different angle. Yeah. And like, it's just another pathway into telling that same story. Mm-hmm. You know, and yeah, I mean, it's, there's just so much bandwidth, mm-hmm. you know, whether we're talking food, whether we're talking a, a subject that we're shooting, but there's just a lot of bandwidth in the world around us to like get tap into that story mm-hmm. that we're talking about. And like, yeah, you experience that on the, on these photo walks, like when I see and, and like it, it's it's dynamic. So like when I see, you know, stuck, get like super excited about a shot or like Mario, like hyper focusing in on something and I'm like, yo, what's he looking at? Uh-huh. You know, like what why are you why are you looking at that corner like that? Like what yeah. am I missing? <laughs> you know, yeah. like and your energy and your excitement does something for me and and like completes that moment in a way that's like and again now there's people walking right by us who you feel like you're in you're like in Narnia. Mm. There's like a whole nother reality that you're standing in in that exact right. moment that other people aren't and queuing they're, into. They're always like, and, what, like what are, y'all what are you looking at? Oh, I'm really? Like, Don't oh, you get that? Do you get that a lot? Oh, oh yeah. You get that a lot? I have no idea. Yeah. It's okay. Like, like, <laughs> like you'll be taking a picture of a corner or something on the, on the sidewalk and they're like, what are you doing? Yeah. Do they they're actually like, verbalize it or do they just? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah? Yep. What do they yeah. say? Like, what are you taking a picture of? Or what yeah, are you seeing? What are y'all What's photographing? What is this for? Yeah. Okay. What, 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 yeah. yeah. Should, they want to see, like, like, the funniest thing is, like, uh, sometimes I'll just do this just to troll people. You, know, you got to have fun with it, too. You know, you just punch <laughs> right. your camera in some general direction. And then, like, people uh, are yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then, What's up? And then, like, people be looking up. <laughs> got them. <'em>, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, it's just my dream drifting it's away. Like, yeah, it's just that. So, I want to hear more about these, like some of the experiences when yeah. you're taking, when you're, yeah. when you start to um, mix and mingle with people, because mm, yeah. you yeah. are pretty oh. um, <laughs> open with taking pictures of people. Oh yeah. You were saying earlier, you're a little less. Yeah. I, I yeah. rather catch people in their natural state, you know, sort of like mm-hmm. candids. I like doing more candids yeah. rather Where than they, having them. They don't know you're taking a picture. Exactly. Ah, yeah. Okay. I still don't. And I still prefer not to show somebody's face because, you know, I know people are, like, super sensitive. Some people are super sensitive about that. So so somebody's walking, you know, get the back of their shirt or the back of their heads or what are they looking at or a silhouette of somebody that's framed within this portion of light somewhere or shadows casting over somebody. So mm. I'd rather do that than, uh, than capture their face and, like, eating a burger. You know? uh. <laughs> like, so, yeah, that's... Pretty much, if I'm going to take a picture of somebody, that's where I gravitate towards. Unless they're, like, super, like, there's this look that I, I just have to capture. And then I'll just ask. I love your look. Give them a compliment first. Do you mind if I take a picture? Mm. And then, so if you're going to do that and they say, yeah, do you say, all right, we'll stand here and, and smile. Okay, so yeah. then you're giving some instructions. And I, then you give some instructions. I love how your hair falls in there. Can you just... Play with your hair. Stuff okay. Like that, you know. Okay. But I haven't had to do that yet. <laughs> oh, really? Because I, I, I do this for work. I do this all the time. Mm-hmm. I don't want to take pictures of people anymore. I just mm-hmm. I just want to take pictures of things, mm-hmm. you know, uh, nature, uh, um, people flowing. I just, you know, I don't want to take mm-hmm. portraits when I'm out. On the, on that the makes street. sense. You know, like. Are you? Yeah, it's are scary, you? too. I would imagine. <laughs> yeah, I would. Imagine. It is, but it's not. You know, I have the personality for it, but I just don't want to anymore. It's just yeah. like, I do this. Okay. I do this for a living, man. I was like, gotcha. and then, and then people, then you have to tell people that like, a lot of people are very self conscious about you know like posing for camera. Automatically, oh, you yeah. have a, a big camera like this. Oh my god, he's a professional. <laughs> I can't smile. Yeah. What do I do? Uh-huh. Like, yeah. <laughs> are you engaging with people a lot? For sure, and that depends on where where you are. You know, mm-hmm. I went out today uh, downtown Murfreesboro, and that was. It's spotty, you know. It's just one guy walking down here, and I wanted that shot so bad. <laughs> ah. He was kind of like checking me out, like, you know, what is he, what is he up to? So, you know, use your judgment, of course. 
But you know, you go downtown Nashville, man. They yeah. they're all about it. Yeah, they're, totally. They're like, yeah. Oh really? They, oh yeah. They okay. Love that. Yeah. They love it. <laughs> okay. They see your camera and they love it. Um, but yeah, and also you know the people asking, hey, what are you taking a picture of? And a lot of them have wanted to get into photography or something like that mm-hmm. at some point in their life. And that you might go down a whole road of like, where are you from or what do you do? And mm-hmm. this and that, um, yeah. I, I get business cards all the time. I get, yeah. you know, they give them to you. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, what are they, what are they expecting is going to happen or what are they, what would be a, what do they hope is going to happen when they give you a business I mean, card? Well, we're talking, we're having a conversation and we're getting to know each other. Ah, you know? they just want to stay. They just yeah, want the last guy content. was like a, a, a dog trainer or something mm. and we talked for like 45 minutes <laughs> i didn't take pictures for 45 wow. minutes talking to this guy and it's yeah. to- totally cool yeah wow. there's one reason why i like it and i go out and and do it because i'm a people person but yeah uh but he's like hey here's my car if you ever you know get that dog i was probably talking about man i, I want a dog at some point mm-hmm. you know call me or get in touch with me or whatever okay so mm-hmm. a lot of uh a lot of uh, communication happens a lot of networking happens mm-hmm. you know um, hey, I need you for, you know, my company needs some headshots or something, you know. You're okay. a guy walking around with a camera. So there, some people will, will be, you know, a little bit aggressive and, and mm. get your info. And what you had said, I think, yeah. is that you'll ask someone if you can take their picture. Yeah. So that's good for you because you're getting, yeah. you know, content. You're getting yeah. a subject to take a picture right. of or an object, a person. Mm-hmm. And then it's good for them because then they – they scan a QR code on the back of your hoodie and that's go right. to your Instagram account. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and then they, they DM you and yeah. you send them their picture. Yeah, I get that a lot. So mm-hmm. it's great for them because they got a really, really good, awesome, high quality picture, high quality picture of yeah. them for free. Yeah. And then you get to use them that's right. as a subject. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's, uh, that's one of the fun parts, you know, walking around. And again, like you got to know your context. Downtown Nashville on Broadway. I mean, people are just, they're, they're ready to get, have their picture taken. Okay. I mean, <laughs> they're out, they're out, they're ready. You know, they, they got the shoes on, they, they oh, got yeah. the, the, the pants, the shirt, everything, the hat, it's all lined up. Yeah. And uh, for me, like, you know, I'll, I'll just take pictures of people, you know, as they're walking around. But like, if I'm going like more like portrait, I'll just walk up and ask. I haven't okay. had anybody in Nashville say no that I remember. Really? Yeah. Like, See, I'd be worried that they're going to think I'm a weirdo. You know, yeah. maybe they already think that, you know? And so <laughs> okay. I just, you know, just embrace all that, you know? Yeah. And just, like, for me, it's just, it's funny. I I just, I walk up to people, I, I don't mind, you know? And it's, it's usually just, specific. Like, yeah. like we say, like, yeah. they've got this cowboy hat on. Yeah, they got a look. Probably $1,000 yeah. or and something like that. And, like, you're, like you're mm-hmm. watching their, their mannerism. Like, if it looks like they're going through it, having the worst day yeah, in their yeah, life, right. I'm not going to walk up yeah, like, right. hey, you know, I really like authentic tears. I, I want to capture you your know? sadness. <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> like, I need something for my Instagram <laughs> that shows someone, like, mourning. You know, can yeah. I take, you know, but it's usually, yeah. like, there's there's a point of, uh, of reference, you know, like, you know, sometimes, like, as a, as a black photographer, sometimes, like, in, when I'm downtown Nashville, if I see, you know, uh, someone who's black, I might just walk up to him and be like, hey, man, like, let me uh, let me get your uh, your photo. Mm-hmm. And, like, it's it's always cool. Or I'll go up to people that are, like, really styled up. Right, you know, like, right. you, you got the hat. Like, there, you are not wearing that hat to not be seen. Right. right. So let me leverage, leverage that. And, like, you're having a moment where you're enjoying it. You know, like, I can catch. Like, usually when they're enjoying it and kind of, like, laughing around or if somebody already has their phone out taking a picture of someone, mm-hmm. I'll actually just walk up and okay. start taking photos yeah. and then they'll jump in and they're like, Oh, let me see what that looks like. Right. And okay. you know, things like that. That's so like, usually a good time to yeah, do that's it a too. great okay. time to do they're it. They're already like, taking, they're pictures. already taking a yeah. picture. Yeah. I'm like, how about this one? Yep. <laughs> you know? So yeah. How, how common is this? Because of all of the times that I've been down to Broadway, mm-hmm. I don't ever remember seeing anyone doing this. Yeah, but you guys are going down there. I don't see anybody out there, honestly. I mean, maybe, maybe you guys can chime on in on occasion. Yeah, I don't yeah. generally. I mean, you might find a couple like on Broadway itself. Right. Uh, not a ton. I mean, there's there's like one guy I've seen twice down there. Really? One dude. So you guys are doing this around Nashville, mm-hmm. but there's not a lot of other people doing it. Not not as like I think that there are like some individuals that go out. I've not ran into any crew of people. Mm. Because a lot of times, we're like, like we're a couple rolling, like you guys. Yeah, like we were rolling deep. Like it'd be three of us, four of us, you know, all with cameras. You know, I, I've never seen that. I've never ran into that unless it's just like a group, like a family and they're like tourists. 
and they have like their little cameras out like for the right. you know i've seen that but not like an intentional group of people like that are photographers in nashville just like kind of getting together i've yeah. not seen that maybe you, you you would know more about that so from what i've noticed um the the website meetup mm-hmm. there's there are people who are actually like they do photo walks but for money so there's like a more experienced photographer oh, will yeah. take other Tourists. non-experienced photographers oh, okay, that out on a photo walk and mm-hmm. you got to pay them or mm-hmm. or they just do it randomly on this day mm-hmm. but not at the frequency that we are doing it. Yeah. So, yeah. so there are mm-hmm. photographers that go out on their own. Um, there's several of our friends that we follow oh, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, that are really big on Nashville. In Nashville, one guy I know, he is literally lives downtown, so he has, like, like the best views. Rainy rainy downtown, he's there. Yeah. Sunny downtown, he's down. I'm like, man, I envy that sometimes. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, and so... He goes out by himself. It's a lot of times I go and I hit him up and he's like, all right, let's go. So mm-hmm. so you got to know either you got to have a crew and it's great that you have other people who are like minded. So if you're spending 20 minutes on trying to find the perfect shot, nobody's going to give you beef because they're all trying to get their own shot, too. Yeah. Right uh-huh. yeah. So it's good to have people, you know, because I did it alone last or last night. I felt like, man, I needed my guys with me. So, um uh, mm-hmm. It, it was a very abbreviated walk, I'll say that. But uh, mm-hmm. and I just went home after that. But I needed to get out. Yeah, last night I needed to. Yeah. To to birth that creativity last night. I'm sure it's way more fun to go out as a, as a pack. Oh, yeah. oh it's great. Yeah. I mean, I get the best that, shots. I get the be best awesome. shots when I'm hanging out with y'all, man. Yeah. Like, yeah. I bet. Sure. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Every now and again, it's like you know you get you get shots. I mean, you can you, you have a skill set, but like man, there's something about like the rendezvous of like. You know, sometimes it's just short notice. Yeah. It's oh, like, yeah. hey, guys, like, I got well, this, like. I was like, going to say, when I was down there that yeah. Sunday. Oh, yeah. And I was already shooting for maybe an hour. Yeah. And I think I text, like, that we got a group text going. Mm-hmm. Like, man, I'm just not feeling it. And he was like, yo, I'm on my oh, way. Oh, <laughs> really? Yo, I'm, like 20, so like, I'm like, 20 minutes, I'll see you. <laughs> oh, yeah? You can go home, I go home and download, you know, upload all the photos, and you can kind of see when Tony got there. <laughs> oh, like, wow. It's the inspiration boost yeah, right there. Oh, really? Pictures, that's you know, cool. And then all of a sudden, you got some back. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, that's the way really it works, cool. man. Sure. You know, like, I'm inspired. Like, in the, in the more of us that are in that mix, like, especially, like, us three, like, together. Like, there is a, a special chemistry yeah, for sure. when we get together. You know, and like you can kind of add anybody else into that mix, but like, like there is a there is a solid core here, right. and I feel like, man, when the three of us go out, there's just it's something magical yeah. is about to happen, like that photographically. Is. So he's that, a confidence boost too. Yeah, that's what I was picking up on. Yeah, that's why I wanted to have you guys here because yeah. it seems like something is happening. Yeah, you know what I mean. There's an energy here to yeah. this. Something there's a yeah. there's a draw. There's like mm-hmm. a magic to something. Yeah. To what you guys are doing yeah, and it's and it's like working, it's pulling other people in. I mean yeah. I mean, how many different people have I heard that have been looped into this one time or another? Like you guys are the core, but I mean yeah. you've had a lot of people come and yeah. join you, express yeah. interest, Absolutely. all of this. Yeah, people hear about these photo walks and you know, I'm starting to, you know, on the art of mundane, like kind of almost do like these photo dumps because there there's so much that doesn't get on the pics by Shep, you know, Instagram, because that's more very specific to what it is. But there's just like these like experiences of like seeing like the crew together and like just the, the street photography of it, the real on the ground, the spontaneity of it, that it's like very appealing to people. Like people see that, they're interested in it. You know, I'm I'm actually working on this is uh something I hope to do this year, 2023, a kind of mega photo walk for Nashville. Tamron is like totally behind it. They want to give away some like free lenses and things like that with it. But I want to set something up where like almost just like, you know, take the core, the core group that's here. Mm -hmm. And what would it look like to go down? I don't know, 12th Avenue South and do like a two hour photo walk. And it's just this magnet event that brings other photographers in and we just have fun, but like kind of like lead the pack on that. Like, I Mm -hmm. feel like there's a, there are people that, that, do photo walks, but man, there's like a, there's an energy when we do photo walks <laughs> that it's just like, man, like drop somebody in on that. 
and they feel like they just they stepped into something. Yeah, and I, and that sure. I, what I, I think that something is the fact that man, like we just we enjoy doing this and enjoy each other's company. Yeah, and there's just there's just something about that. Like I feel like I can complete, like you know, like we feel like you can complete somebody's sentences. I feel like I can almost like complete your like your photographic reflexes. Mm, absolutely. It's mm. like, man, like mm. I almost like, yeah. like, hey, hey man, there's a nut over there. Yeah. Oh, it's thanks, like man. it's like thanks. I appreciate it. <laughs> you know, I'm like, get that shot. You know, and there's there is just there's a fun to it. And like we don't take ourselves too seriously. I like we take the art seriously for what it is. Like, man, we wanna we wanna do good art. But like we don't take ourselves like I, I the, the main thing is like Ego always gets in the way mm. of everything good. And, like, I feel like when I'm out with these dudes, like, there's not, like, this ego thing. Like, it's not a, it's not weird. Like, the, I've been around creatives that are, like, so, like, stuffy and so, like, them-focused mm. that it's, like, it just takes the air out of a room. Right. You know what I mean? And, like, like there's, it's the complete opposite. Like, there, there is this a sense in which, I mean, it is a culture. It's a culture that that's I think being birthed in the context of photography where like, cause you know, I can't speak for anybody else, but I can imagine like photo walks being very much so about like, you know, one upping the next guy, mm -hmm. you know, in a way where it's like, you know, it's about, man, I'm trying to, I'm trying to win at this guy's expense. But like, man, there's just a sense of camaraderie. Like, like we rejoice in each other's wins. Mm -hmm. Like when you find a shot that's super dope, it's like, man, that's, Ah, yeah. dang, like I never would have saw that. Yeah. Like it's not like a man, almost man, why he get that shot, man? Like I right. to, you know, like, but then there's also like a healthy competitiveness that's like, dang, like he stretches me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He makes me think differently. Man, he's shooting at like, you know, 35 millimeters. Yeah. I, everything I'm doing is like 70 and up. Like <laughs> man, I wanna do I wanna do something at 35 millimeters why? too. Like, no. Yeah, yeah, it's let me like get some wide yeah. Shots. Let me get some wide shots. Like, like you know, so like there's a sense in which like the ego is out of it, and it just there's a purity to the enjoyment of the art and yep. the time together that I think when people jump in like and we you know we had Mario you weren't there for that one but um the other week we had you know a brand new shooter yeah. and then a guy who doesn't even like. He wasn't even He's shooting. not even a photographer. He just wanted to, walk he just yeah. wanted to hang out. <laughs> yeah. you know? I want to walk around with you guys. Like, I just want to walk. Me. I like, get that. Let me just walk, you know? And it's like, you know, this is a brand new shooter. It's the first time he was taking his camera out yeah. wow. of the house to shoot. So fun. And that's like, you know, and it's just like, we're all like rejoicing. Like, dude, that's a great shot. Yeah. Like, it really mean it. Like, it's, yeah. just, it's just fun. Like, there's a safety there where like you can explore mm -hmm. different things. Like, you don't have to like compete. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not like, I don't know if pro you probably haven't been on a uh, Facebook photography forum. No. Yeah. Don't ask a, don't ask a question as a newbie over there. Yeah, you, you get, get ripped up. Oh, really? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, dude, the guy's brand new. Like, yeah. what uh -huh. do you expect them to know about stuff yeah. like this? I'm like, yeah. and then I see people like expressing themselves like, like this dude, he took some picture and he just, he made this girl's color, hair color different and people are like ripping them. I'm like, bro. This right. is the way you saw it. Right. Keep doing you, man. Keep right. doing that. Forget right. what everybody's saying. Keep doing what you needed to do. And right. I had to get off one of these. I had to get off. I don't think I've I've been on the right. these forums ever since because they just I don't ask anything because everybody knows it all over there and yeah. I, I can't stand know it all. Yeah, like, it doesn't yeah. sound like you need it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let uh, me ask you this, Tony. How yeah. do you not just take pictures of these two dudes? Oh, I mean, these, these, oh man, look. <laughs> these dudes the, need to be on the, the other end of the camera, bro. I got the, if the these guys catalog of these If these brothers, guys can't be models, look, I, dude, look, I don't know. I who. think I, look, I probably have more pictures of you guys in my catalog than I have of my kids. <laughs> Like, are we gonna I, edit that out? Like, are we gonna take this uh, one out? This, That's this funny. Is, I'm like, man, like, who are these? <laughs> listen, there's, there's your children. Who are these other <laughs> older ones? Like, these are my older sons, <laughs> you know? Like, man, like, but it's like when we get out there, yeah. it's like the environment is so like just amazing, like for portraits. So like, yeah, we get uh, so many yeah. portraits of each other. I have more pictures of me now that I'm doing these photo walks. Yeah. Because, oh, that's cool. You know, because yeah. we're always taking pictures of each other. And it's like, you're the easiest person to like experiment with. 
Right. But like, I'm going to spend 10 minutes like, OK, lean up against this. Mm -hmm. Like, and you know what I'm doing. I'm like, OK, how about if I go down at this angle? How about you stand right there? Like, they're the most gracious dudes. So, like, I've got all these, you know, this is where you get all your reps in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, yep. it, but it's great, though. It's great. These guys are like very photogenic. <laughs> very photogenic. I mean, talk about a couple of handsome devils. Come Seriously. There it is. Um, oh, no. What is it? <laughs> Let me ask this, because. I think that, uh, okay, it would almost seem like some people might think, like, all right, it's flooded. Mm -hmm. You know, you guys are you guys own Broadway. No way. Mm -hmm. I wanted to take pictures, but now everyone's no taking way. pictures. Mm -hmm. You know, it's too there's too much out there. There's not. What am I going to do? Go take the a picture that actually goes somewhere. There's mm -hmm. all these better people. There's so much mm -hmm. further ahead. Mm -hmm. You know, like, is that the way it works or is it like an unlimited sort of a situation? Yeah, is absolutely. it, yeah. is it like, is it, it's the market already saturated? No, not at all, man. And I was going to say, like, it's it, the barrier, the entry is like nothing. You know, bring your cell phone. Like, you don't mm -hmm. even need yeah. to go. I will let camera. you know, man. Honestly, the difference, once you put it up on a site or something or share it, you can't hardly even tell if, if it was from this camera or from a cell phone. Seriously. Mm. I've, I've taken so many shots on my cell phone and posted it. And, and these like, are like, what, what lens did you <laughs> what, what lens, <laughs> what lens are you? The <laughs> Pixel 7. <laughs> the Pixel 7 lens. Seriously. The You're Google like, lens. Seriously. Google's making lenses. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's all about, it's all about creativity. Mm. And, and art is literally beauty is in the eye of the beholder. I tell people that all the time. What somebody may find like ugly, a million people yeah. may just find like beautiful. Yeah. Forget a million people. You find it beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You are expressing yourself. You're birthing this thing that's ingrained in your mind that you always wanted to do. And you're just putting it out there. Uh, sometimes you don't even want to put it out there because you're just afraid right. of, of yeah. criticism or cr critique. And sometimes that's fine too. But you know, like you've done for years yeah. before you started, you know, picks by Shep. So mm -hmm. the best thing to do is to go out there and, experience it it's therapeutic yeah. it's a different way of uh expressing your creativity yeah um if you have creativity or it's just a different way of you know just living you know um anybody who's looking to do we don't own bro actually i do i own bro <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah uh we don't own anything it's like this whole planet is free you know yeah. except yeah government buildings yeah, it can it can never be saturated. <laughs> yeah. Gender, yeah. shout out yeah. Gender i even got them <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it can never yeah. be saturated it's all perspective. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, and you don't, you don't have yeah. to share everything. Yeah. And document it like, like one category of photography, you know, it's like art and beauty and then like documentation, mm. exactly. you know, like in, and everyone, you know, has space to document yep. the world as they see it and as they experience it. And so like, yeah, down to like what you did with the, um, you know, after the tornadoes mm -hmm. or just, man, I just want to document a day, you know, like this is mm. what mm -hmm. I see, how I saw it. You know, that's that's an important piece of understanding, like, the texture of a culture and society, like documentation, mm. you know. And so, yeah, I, I feel like there's there are so many ways to see a thing that, you know, it's it's it might be oversaturated. I think, you, you know, when we start talking about oversaturated from a market standpoint and like how equitable is it in terms of like, you know, marketing and, and sales and things like that. Sure, we can talk about that. But when we're talking about just like, and just seeing life, like photography is like sitting down and having a conversation with a person and just saying, how was your day? Yeah. Like it's, you know, it's the visual representation of like that verbal conversation. So I would never mm -hmm. say like, man, the world is like too saturated with people sitting down at tables <laughs> talking about how their day was. Stop talking about that. Mm -hmm. You know, like, you know, why are you talking about how your day was? You know, there's too many people talking about, like it's a perspective. And it's valuable to someone, obviously the person that's communicating it, um, and it's valuable to the people that, that are paying attention to that circle, which is why, you know, like, you know, even when it comes to, like, following, you know, a, a Picks by Ship account, you know, maybe there are, like, 40,000 people that are interested in that. Okay, that's cool. Like, it's not more valuable at that level than someone who has, like, you know, 200 followers. They're, they're giving a story. They're telling a story it's they're they're telling you how they've experienced and sampled life around them mm -hmm. and there are people listening mm. and one person is extraordinarily valuable 
Mm-hmm. And that person that's creating it, it, it Absolutely. There's, there's a reason to listen to them. What is it that's so satisfying about like getting just the right picture? Do you think? Because I'm not yeah. like, you know, you guys that's are a, a few question. different sort of, you know, you're in your own sphere, but yeah. like to, this afternoon, I got yeah. a, a picture of um, Axel. Mm-hmm. And I like, you know, I took like six pictures and I was yeah. walking around and he kept sitting there looking at me yeah. and then I deleted, <laughs> I deleted five and kept the one. Yeah. And like, mm-hmm. you know, I feel pretty good about that one. That's great. Like, man, I was like, man, he looks so good in that yeah. picture. Yeah. It's there's, it's, so that's just, that's just me with an iPhone, yeah. not anything close to a professional, just a straight up dummy yeah. with my iPhone. And it felt good yeah. to me. That's great. So I have to imagine when you guys get some pictures yeah. and it's like, Ooh, that's the one that yeah. must feel really satisfying. Yeah. yeah. What is it that's mm. so satisfying about just the right picture? Well, do you, do you see what you did? You took mm-hmm. five pictures, yes. right? And, but there was one that spoke to you. Um, a lot of times we take quite a I don't <laughs> say million pictures, <laughs> thousands. <laughs> thousands of pictures. Yeah. You know, and and sometimes you know it right away yeah. after the shot. You're yep. like, man, I got, I, mm. I got yeah. this. This is you the know, one. Like, a lot of times, uh, due to the power of editing, you can go back and post and look at it on the big screen. I'm like, my God, <laughs> this <laughs> atrocity that's what looking I, back at me. What have I done? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was I thinking? <laughs> I missed focus. I did this, or you can look at it and say, Wow, I really got this. But I gotta do is crop it. And now it's perfect. Look at it now. Yeah. And then we share it in the group text and everybody's like, whoa, yeah. look at this. And yeah. so, uh, yeah, it's uh, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Yeah. It's, mm-hmm. it's what you like. And it captured a memory that you loved or it captured something that spoke to you. It captured something mm-hmm. that evoked an expression that you were trying to uh, uh, birth. And so yeah. that's really yeah. what makes a banger a banger in your eyes. Yeah. But there's something yeah. about like just the right moment up yeah. up there in that shelf is a picture of uh, I think there's Grand Tetons across like a lake. Mm. It might can't see yeah. it, but that dude was yeah. um, doggone it. Now I can't remember his first name. And um, he was on this podcast and he was a photographer at Journeys, the shoe company. Mm. And Journeys. he was getting a little burnt out with his yeah. creativity and photography and everything. Yeah. And he was on vacation and he went by himself down wow. to this lake and was sitting there. And he looked up, mm. and he had it wasn't his phone. It was it was a camera that he had with him, and he took that shot. Yeah. And when he took that yeah. shot, he knew like he was taking other pictures, but when he took yeah. that shot, yeah, he knew that's the one. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. And then so he was on the podcast telling me about this, and we were talking about some of the stuff, and he and that's that picture yeah. got him back into, I think it was um, there's a term for this that I forget, but it's taking uh like br- pictures of brides leading up to their wedding. Mm, yeah. Um, Boudoir. Yeah. No, it actually, it actually yeah. was exactly that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And he was yeah. a non weird, yeah. non weird yeah. dude. Yeah. Boudoir. And it was like, um, it wasn't like, you know, cr- crossing lines or whatever, but it was right. like, it was yeah. that type of thing. Yeah. And when he, and he had done it and then he had done that and was kind of successful. And then he got burned out on it and it was just like doing photography for work. And he, that picture got him back into like doing photography yeah. for yeah. the, for the love of it again. Yeah. It, oh, I think that's when he started taking bridles instead of what you said yeah. earlier. Is Gregory. Uh, yeah. Um, Buyer line. Yes. Thank yeah. you. Good mm, grief. Nice, um, nice. Yes. What's up, Gregory? Anyhow that like, and then he gave me that print because that's I just sweet. thought that picture is like, yeah, nice. man, it's just, he nailed it with that yeah. shot. Yeah. So there's yeah. something about just the right shot and then like memorializing it in eternity in a picture. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it can, it's really powerful. It is. It's powerful. I think you know, to speak of like even like the the shot. Yeah, I, I think of three factors like um, truth, beauty, and goodness. Like there might be a shot I take, and the reason why I'm like that's it, is because it told the truth about that moment, right? So like there's something that happened. So like one example was um, my sister flew out from Virginia spend Christmas with me. And while we're hanging out at, um, was it Hattie B's in uh, downtown on Broadway, uh, there was this, it, it was packed. They were closing the doors, locking it. It was late, you know, 20 people still waiting for their food. These two workers in the back in the kitchen had a conflict. And so like, 
and my sister works in like you know culinary the culinary world and so like she immediately recognized hey yeah there this is this happens a lot there's a lot of tension in the kitchen when things kind of get you know high demand and I just pulled out my camera and I took a shot and later on when I went and looked at it you know it was just it was this raw moment that was just captured and I sent it to my sister and she was like, man, I didn't even know you took your camera out and took that <laughs> shot. Of course. Ah. You know, of course, <laughs> of course it's like, yeah. of course, it's like, they're like fingertips, pew, you know, and like, I took the shot, but I'm it told a sniper. the truth. <laughs> <Yeah>, sniper. <laughs> yeah. And, and it was like, it just told the truth about that moment. Yes. And, and if you were there and saw that and saw that picture, it just resonated. So like, it was the shot because it just told the truth, mm. right, about what happened. But then there's like beauty, beauty, like, it, it takes it a step beyond that because it, it's not like, you know, I, I don't believe like truth is, is relative in an absolute sense, but I believe that perception is a valid category and like beauty has everything to do with perception. Just like you're saying, the eye of the beholder. And so, you know, there might be certain shots like, like there's one shot I took of like a truck. You know, it's one of them old school 50s style truck. I got up close to the lens, you know, and when you get close up with a lens, you're going to like warp the sense of perception of, of the image. You get close up, something looks way bigger and blown up and almost cartoonish. Mm. It's not really the truth about what that truck looks like. That truck doesn't really look like that. We all know it, but it's like appealing. It's like there's beauty mm. to it, right? And so like, so you know, sometimes that's the shot. It's not just like the truth, but it's like the beauty of it. Like there's something about this that's exaggerated and we all know it, but we like it. Mm. So that that's that's another thing. And then goodness, it's like there is something about the story of the moment mm. that connects with you at a level. So like, you know, there might be moments where like you see like a father walking with his daughter holding hands or like just something that, uh, you know, that draws on. Like it's not just like, be- like I wouldn't look at that. And I might say, okay, that's beautiful. But there is just something adds to the level deeper that that's just goodness. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. You know, it's just a moment that, you know, of innocence or like, you know, a picture of like a little kid, you know, like holding a teddy bear or something, you know, something like that. There's just like a goodness to that moment. And we resonate with it at the story level. So like, so yeah, the shot, I, I, I sometimes I don't, I know when I got the shot because like I see something, I immediately identify that. I mean, that's just like goodness right there. Boom. Or it's just like I'm documenting something and it's true. And so that's the shot. So are you trying to capture truth, beauty, and goodness in every shot? Or some yeah, shots are truth? Yeah, some I, I don't know. I mean, I think if you could, I think that would make you the most amazing <laughs> photographer in the <laughs> no, world. Tough. Yeah, okay. If you could capture. But if you can capture one. Yeah, if you can capture one and do it justice, hmm. then like people are going to resonate with it at some level. And, you know, if you can capture multiple things, you know, at once, like, man, truth and goodness together, like, you know, like an example of that would be like, let's say if you saw a picture, like if someone were like giving money to like a homeless guy in the corner and you took that shot, just like right at the uh, right moment when, you know, his eyes were kind of looking up, you know, at the person giving the money, like you told the truth about that moment. It's the truth. It's like you're not, it's not some stylistic shot or something. You know, it's not like beauty in that sense, but it's just, it's goodness and it's just truth. Like it's it's a documented moment that just, whoa. Mm-hmm. You know, like those resonate, those shots resonate when you get like at least two of these pillars, right? Or like let's say if you get like something that's like beautiful and it's like true to life, you know, like, you know, maybe like some models or something like that, like or, or something like in nature, you know, and you're not embellishing it, like you just captured it, told the truth, and it's also be- beautiful. Um, you know, and I think you could, there's some shots of like truth, beauty, and goodness together, and they just, they're, they're amazing. But yeah, I, you know, I, I, if hitting one of, the, one of three of those and dialing it in is what begins to like resonate with us. And so, yeah, the shot just means whatever it is in that moment. And we know when it's like, if it's a moment that should be like uh, goodness, like, you know, let's take the homeless guy, take it money. What if I did this like wild, exaggerated over, 
you know, like blown thing of like the money going into the, the homeless guy's hand. <laughs> you know, like great. like you'd be like, man, that's kind of interesting. But like, it's like, man, we kind of we leaned into like maybe like beauty mm, and yeah, style yeah. in a way that like really like killed what could have been told about like just the truth and the goodness uh-huh. of that, you know? So, you know, there are ways to, you know, and I think great photographers are the guys that can like consistently think in those categories and like capture that yeah. and almost just like effortlessly capture that. Like that's, and I think that every photographer is like, we want those kinds of aspects yeah. yep. in our photography. hundred percent. And, you know, and I think, you know, I'm probably, I probably lean more in terms of like the, the beauty aspect and i want to get a little bit more of like the uh like the truth and goodness okay you know so truth beauty and goodness did those categories just sort of occur to you or did you did you see this somewhere because yeah, that truth, makes a lot of sense yeah, truth beauty and goodness um i can't remember i mean there's th- people have written on these three virtues and things like that and okay you know i mean hip-hop man shout out to Stephen the levite uh who has a whole like album i think called like truth beauty and goodness oh yeah actually it's like muse one yeah there's like you know artists who've written on this kind of stuff um you might find it in like philosophy classes and okay what is it about those three because i always think in terms of like all right well what are all of our options and then like Hmm. like which ones you know can we do away with to get down to like the still to like those three so yeah like what are their competitors truth beauty and goodness like what else is yeah. it just they just happen to be a category of their own or? Yeah, I think they exist in categories of their own because like you could say, you know, and again, like, you know, truth. I don't think truth is absolutely relative, but like you can t- there's ways to take pictures mm-hmm. of a true event, but in a way that gives the leans into a perception that it's not actually I mean, like paparazzi. Right. right? Like, right. you know, so like I'm going to take a picture in a way yep. that's. I'm presenting it as if it's true, but it just, it looks a certain way. That's, I'm yes. trying to really lead you on. Well, I guess there's no, there's no competitor to the truth. Like right. something is either true right. or it's not. So right. that, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Beauty also makes sense. Like something's mm-hmm. beautiful. Beauty, beauty like can be altered as well. So yeah. Photoshop. Yeah. Sure. I feel like, yeah, sure. I feel like there's always like the evil twin of, because it, it, cause it's like true and false beauty or whatever, but it's also like truth that it like counterfeit. Like sure. It's like trying to, it wants you to believe it's true, but right. it's not, yep. you know. But there's something about like beauty. Like I was just thinking <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, I was yeah. looking at that yeah, yeah. The screensaver on the TV and yep. thinking like, that's beautiful. That's right. beautiful. That's right. beautiful. Be true. So, <laughs> right. Right. Oh, oh, oh. Right. I see that's, what you're saying. That's double exposure, isn't it? It could be. Yeah. It really? Might be, or it might be digitally edited yeah. in the back. Yeah. In the back. That oh, might wow. actually be interposed on that picture. Really? You know, I would not have known that would be composite. possible. Yeah. But there's something about beauty, like when you, when you see it, you know it. So mm-hmm. that makes sense also to me. There, there's no real competitor to beauty. Mm-hmm. Goodness is, I think, is the one that I'm interested in. Yeah, like, yeah. I think of like, I don't know, what else do I think of? I guess I think of like patience, meekness, kindness. Yeah. But that doesn't make any sense. You can't capture. So there's something about goodness that also stands alone. Yeah, I think goodness. I'm really intrigued yeah, by those three. Yeah, I think goodness, especially when we start talking about photography, is what connects us at like the human level to the story you know because like Mm -hmm. even if you're like in let's say you know i like watching movies like let's say like you know jason Bourne and things like that you know that's cool i like it but like there is there is something about like cinematography or like photography or storytelling that like we are really intrigued like what what i like about like let's say jason Bourne or like you know John Wick or something like that is not just like random violence, mm-hmm. but it's like violence leveraged in a certain direction mm-hmm. for a purpose, right? I, I love the, the, you know, the equalizer movies with Denzel, mm-hmm. you know, I love that story of a guy who's like this low key, you know, assassin for the government. He got, you know, he's getting out the game, but like, he's got a good reason to get back and like defend the honor mm-hmm. of someone who is like worthy of defending. He's the equalizer. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's not like, it's not just like random, but let's watch, you know, two hours of like killing, right. you know, but it's like that is actually leveraged in a story. Whereas it like highlights something that we all yearn for. So like in photography, like goodness 
you know, and again, like there's, there's a broad spectrum. I think there's like kind of like a, a common grace to use that phrase, like lane for goodness. I mean, like people resonate with photos uh, of moments of like innocence, you know, moments of virtue, um, moments of like, like human, uh, like openness. Mm -hmm. That just, that tells the story. Like we, like we resonate with that. We like that. We like seeing things of that nature. Mm -hmm. um, there's a, there's a beauty to that. Even with nature, like even if we're talking about like nature, like just uh, not only it's beauty, but like something of like the, the sanctity of nature. Yeah. And there's, there's something about the storytelling aspect that goodness tends to kind of like encapsulate, like, you know, the bounty of it, the, the wonder of it. You know, there, there are aspects of that that are, are uh, uh, just one step maybe off of like beauty and it just maybe it goes deeper. It's more primal. And s different people have different opinions on this, but I would you personally say that truth beauty and goodness is appealing and alluring and it's like magnetic because God is behind that. Yeah, I think so. I think that's, yeah. Like you see truth, beauty and goodness in God. It's like, you know, as, as a Christian, I think of God in terms of like, okay, he's there, there's truth. All right. There's, here's who he is. Okay. Like, but not just true. Like there's beauty, like something attractive, appealing, but then there's like a goodness in that, like something can be true and like beautiful and just like off to itself. But like that goodness is like, I get to like step into that. Like there is a moment I could step into. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I think in all of our relationships, the ones that are the, the most life giving to us, truth, beauty, and goodness would at some level characterize it. Yeah. I love it. You know, yeah. like, you know, yeah. All our relationships have, those elements in them, all of our best relationships do. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm going to think, I'm going to think about that the next time yeah. I'm taking a picture of Take my a dog. Picture. Truth. <laughs> beauty, <laughs> goodness. That's I'm the try to capture <laughs> one of these aperture ISO shutter speed, <laughs> oh truth, goodness. beauty, and goodness. We got to have a new switch on, on the camera. <laughs> <G. laughs> truth, beauty, goodness switch. Um, I don't need to keep you guys here, you know, too much longer, but I am curious just because there's, well, I'm just curious about it. What is what is your experience being black man on the street? That's dope. Great question. Yeah. Depends on where we are. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. So around Nashville, what do you give give me some mm. flush that out a little bit? Go ahead, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I don't you know, uh, it, it, it's it's like anywhere else, honestly. Um mm -hmm. you know, for me it's I'll tell you the story. I, I got pulled over um, a couple days ago, and it's nighttime. Cop pulls up behind me. I pull off. Comes up to the car. So because of what's happened in the past with black men and cops, tensions are high already. So heart's racing a little bit, you know, just a little bit. I usually stay pretty calm. But... You know, he comes in and gets my license. I, I noticed that his heart's racing a little bit. Oh, know? really? Yeah. I mean, I just, you can kind of tell when somebody's just, you know. Uh, I, f I felt like the way he was to me, because he probably wanted to portray himself as, it's cool, mm -hmm. I'm safe, you're good, we're, we're all good. But both of our, you know, tension was elevated. But anyway, so, you know, I find that, you know, kind of walking around the city, it's a lot like that cop. Like, I want everybody to know, hey, you don't have to be any, there's no reason to be alarmed, you know, mm -hmm. just a normal person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we carry that with every step. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With every look, every. you know, mm -hmm. it, it's like, yeah. I need to make a certain move or look to make yeah. sure they know mm -hmm. I'm good, you yeah. know. I'm not here to cause any trouble or, you know, harm or whatever. So mm -hmm. um, I kind of experienced that today, too. I walked a little bit downtown Murfreesboro, and um, it's an older white, uh, I guess, area, whatever, courthouse down there and law offices and little coffee shops or whatever, cafes as well. But anyway, 
you know, older white people were walking around. So uh, I'm just walking around with a camera, you know. And so I'm just thinking, mm-hmm. I'm thinking about their perception of me. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. what is he up to? Mm-hmm. Now, I get it because I have perceptions of other people. What is this guy up to? You know. Right. Mm-hmm. So for me, it's I'm very used to it, but mm-hmm. you know, I have this natural way of just mm-hmm. making sure. Yeah. I got a cool yeah. look on me and, you know. You, you don't look threatening. I don't look threatening, <laughs> you know. The comedian, it's a, a meme going around or whatever about, you know. A, coffee. A, a, get a Starbucks, <laughs> black guy Starbucks, Starbucks coffee. Cup. If you walk around with that Starbucks cup, they know you're good. <laughs> <laughs> I drink wow, that's pumpkin funny. spice right. just like you. Uh, right? <laughs> huh. It, it's huh. like that. I know, man. It's like that. Pull yeah. out the laptop just to yeah. let them know, hey, I'm a young professional. Yeah, that's right. You know? Yeah. Yeah, that's a lot, Whatever. man. Whatever. Mario, chime in, man. I'd love to <laughs> hear what you got to say. You know, it's fascinating. I, I can hear any black person talk about this, and it's instantly relatable. So I'm, it's because we've all gone through it. Yep. I lived in small rural Texas. I wasn't a, I wasn't a photographer then. I could imagine going to uh, do photo walks in a town that literally looks like, you know, you could smell the racism in the doors. I, I promise you. Like, and I was at one point I was door to door salesman selling insurance. I, I couldn't get through the door sometimes, mm-hmm. you know? Um, I mean, like I knew I was black, but man, they sure made me feel bad for being black over there, you know? But I digress back to here. Last night I went out, I was walking at night and and I was tail end in the shoot. I was going to my car. My car was like right there, but coming towards me was this uh younger uh white white girl. I'm like, oh man, please don't cross the street. Yep. <laughs> it was like Yep. yep. Man. I mean that was, that was yeah. a thought. Please don't cross the street. I, I didn't look threatening. I have a bag, I have my camera in my hand. And she didn't, you know, and mm-hmm. we crossed paths and we smiled at each other. And I was like, All right. Yeah. Yeah. That, was, that was a good interaction. That was it, you know, like, but uh, at every step, at every juncture, you know, yeah. you know, we are aware that, you know, maybe there's a world where people don't really like people like us, you know, and so very, very cognizant about it, but I don't let it bother me. If you don't touch me, you don't, you could say whatever you want to me. Don't touch me. And God forbid, I'm with my family. You, Oh man, that that's where I think mm. the the carnal and the violence would come out of me if my family is being right targeted to being harmed. I could just thinking about that, my blood is boiling, and mm-hmm. you know that's that's literally where I draw the line right here. You can say whatever you want to me, don't yeah. touch me. Yeah, that's it. But don't say anything to my family, my right. girls, my wife. Yeah, off limits. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, and that's. That's that's pretty much it when it comes to that. But you know, and Nashville is pretty progressive. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a transplant city. Uh, many people from different walks of life, big yeah. cities, New York City, Chicago, L.A. Yeah. They live here, so I I have seldom felt, yeah. you know, like somebody other than a human being. So mm-hmm. kudos to Nashville for that. But uh, I can't speak for outside of Nashville proper. Yeah. But uh, yeah. you know, we. I tend to, I tend to still be very cognizant of where I am and mm-hmm. who's around me. So yeah, mm-hmm. we do have really good interactions too. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's not, it's not. Yeah, bad. it's not bad at all. I agree. Like, <clears throat> you know, my experience has been, um, you know, in Nashville, like downtown, urban, like the more urban it is, and this, this is actually a shock for me because I don't remember it being that easy back in like you know ten years ago. I feel like the city has grown more and more to like embrace the diversity and the ethnic diversity, especially here. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't go anywhere without thinking about the fact that I'm a black man. So like in, in a sense, like it's, there's nothing different about the photo walk than like me walking the down the street to the grocery <laughs> store. It's really the same experience for me. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. just, you know, you're vigilant. Now I will say this, my, I, I love taking pictures of like old dilapidated like country 
boxes and things. I just stay in my car. That's why That's why <laughs> nah. I'm glad I got that. Tamron, 35 to 150. Shout out to Tamron. <laughs> so I stay Shameless right in the plug. car. <laughs> Half a mile away. I got that 50 oh, yeah. to 400. I'm about to get all these like oh, nice little gosh. rural shots. Yeah, we we'll are. never have to leave the car, baby. <laughs> Being right in that bad boy. Yeah. Nah, but that, I, you know, I do switch up my approach based off of that. You know, like downtown, downtown, I don't really, you know, get a sense of, you know, there, there's too much going on with that. But, yeah, like some of the more rural stuff going down in, you know, Nolensville or like just kind of mm. all the further bands out, you know, I just right. pretty much stay in my car and take a shot from the window mm. just because, you know, yeah, I just don't, I'm not here to create any problems, mm-hmm. you know. So you just got to know, know your surroundings. Do you feel... Do you feel like that it's heading in the right direction? Do you feel like this is generally plateaued, or do you feel like it's getting worse? Good question. Yeah, as far as like race relations, yeah, or, is yeah. what, what, what what I'm specifically wondering about is like how you feel when you go yeah. anywhere, do anything, yeah, including on the photo walks. Yeah, to me, I mean that's a that's a pretty broad bucket because it kind of just in, depends. In, I would say maybe in Nashville in particular, yeah. which you know I know you hadn't yeah. been here for a few years, but yeah, in the city, because I'm sure it would it would absolutely depend on. <laughs> we need to be specific about where yeah. we're talking <laughs> yeah, about. Yeah, right? where we're yeah. talking about yeah. specifically because that when, would make a big difference. Yeah, it makes a big difference. But I, I do feel like as far as like in the city, it's definitely trending. And, you know, pers- personally, you know, I I have a white wife. I remember back in 2010 being here where that was just a little more taboo. Wow. And, you know, when we came back, it just seemed like it, it, people don't really bat an eye. At that. And mm. that's more like, you know, bigger progressive cities just don't really, I mean, it's, it's whatever. Taboo from, from, which, from which standpoint? Yeah, the like white standpoint was, or the black standpoint? Probably both, but like, oh really? Yeah, definitely both. Like, because there's a, a huge degree of suspicion on either side, you know. And you know, it's like people are saying, "What kind of black person must you be?" And then you know, other people are saying, <laughs> "What kind of white person must you be?" <laughs> and there's all these judgments of what that means. And like, I guarantee you, you will not nail it. From uh-huh. up, you will not know that she's. You might guess that she's a white girl from from Washington, but you wouldn't guess that she moved to Washington D.C. to go to law school at an HBCU as a white girl. Uh-huh. Wow. So like, so it's like you Dang. can't know that. Right. You know, so like it's just those things are kind of the, you know, the anomaly. So, yeah, so it, it is kind of I have found that it is incredibly easy to engage. And actually, it's been I've been enjoying the fact like when you see like three black dudes walking down the street, um, you know, look, we're either up to like something really bad or really great. <laughs> <laughs> and like we give you every reason. Like, I mean, there, there's there's nothing about the aura where people are, like, pushed off. Like, as a matter of fact, like, I've, we get a lot of people that come to us, white people even that come up to us that are, like, engaging, talking to us. You know, it, it is it is interesting to me, you know, how that's, that's all panning out. You mm-hmm. know, so, yeah, I mean, I, it, it's, you know, now me by myself coming out of a back alley, <laughs> mm-hmm. oh. you know, like when it's dark in, mm. in Nashville – I mean, those are, you know, I, I look, if I saw somebody walking out of a back alley exactly. in the dark in Nashville, I mean, there's a sense of what you just kind of like. Looking like you. Yeah. I don't know what you're up to, man. <laughs> yeah. I ain't got it on me right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, it's it's hard to hear. Like, yeah. it's, it's, hard, it's hard to hear that you think about that. Yeah. When you get pulled over, when you're going to the grocery store, whether you're in an alley or not. It's like, it, it's, mm-hmm. it, it's hard to hear. But is is that sort of what we're talking about when we talk about like we want to work towards a better day, a brighter future? Essentially, what we're talking about is that if you're black, you don't have to worry about that anymore. That, that's yeah. that's what we're talking about. Like, yeah, because like that that's the future that we would want. Where yeah. I'm sure it's like hard to. Is it hard to really even picture that that will happen in your lifetime? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because of our experience. Yeah, now we're my wife and I uh, are at the place where should we open up to our boys about our experience? You know, I have a nine year old and eleven year old. Mm-hmm. Yes, we want the future where we don't even have to tell them anything. You right. know, nobody's going to look at you a certain way. 
Uh, but, you know, and, and we're delaying it right now because I guess we're hopeful. <laughs> but uh, and that's also a hard thing to communicate to a kid. Hey, look, you know, you're probably not going to be liked by certain people mm-hmm. because of the way you look. And that's tough. So, um, yeah, our experience, you know, tells us hmm. may, maybe, maybe not. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully. we don't know. But you know, and as it pertains to my kids, we're still we're still debating. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. we're still hoping that we don't have to. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. You know, one thing that uh, that the world has shown me is that it's not. I'm not being pessimistic. I'm the most optimistic person in the world, but the world has shown me that this will always be there. There will always be pockets of evil around but it has also shown me that you know where there is evil there is also good and people who fight for yeah. for the good and so it'll always be around because you know that kind of ideology doesn't really die mm-hmm. you know it, there's always somebody i mean we're all christians here there's evil in the world you know like so satan's out there Corrupting somebody's mind uh, into believing that these people are the worst people in the world, and so um, it will always be there. But uh, just as there's evil, God Jesus prevails always, mm-hmm. so He will always be there as well. So there's there's the hope for that. So. Yeah. But you must feel as you're out doing these photo walks, engaging with people, talking with people, you must feel if you stop and think about it that you're that you're like part of the solution that you're bringing like healing in little small ways, right. Or, or a a, a proper conception instead of misconception, you're, you're building bridges like it. Yeah. For for someone who's um, like may, I mean, there's some people that's not going to make a difference probably, right. Right. They're setting their ways and this, that's going to take, it's going to roll. It's really going to take God or some sort of major intervention to, to change them. Yeah. But then there might be some people that like uh, they they might you know want to cross the street but they don't or they do but they weren't sure if they needed to whatever yeah. like yeah and then they engage with you guys I mean I have to think yeah. anyone who engaged with you guys on Broadway <laughs> yeah who might have went into that engagement with no some doubt. amount of suspicion is going to yeah. leave that engagement being like oh shoot those dudes are freaking awesome yeah. yeah right like yeah so do you feel that you're part of like yeah. that's a great question man. that um, Connect connecting people yeah. from various standpoints, viewpoints. Yeah, that type yeah. Of thing when actually, you're out doing that, yeah. Can't, I don't even think I've even thought of it at that level, and and I think probably part of part of the reason for that is that you know when I go out on these photo walks, it's just to me it's an extension of just who I am as a whole person. So like, yeah, man, maybe that's happening. Maybe it is happening. And I do hope it's happening, you know, in every engagement that people have with me, you know, and I, and yeah, maybe photo walks are another touch point in which people, uh, you know, can engage with someone who looks like me, sounds like me, kind of has the same aura. And then that tells them, man, you know, what, what does that expose about what's going on in me? But I, I also hope that I'm also learning and growing and engaging through people because I mean, I have a lot of perceptions about what a, a, a Tennessean is, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, <come> in, <laughs> I think, I think a lot of those are, I'm, you know, I'm like, man, I, you know, Tennessee still sounds like Tennessee to me. Like, yeah. Oh, you know, yeah? like, yeah. you know, and, and I think I'm learning how much I can enjoy, you know, other people who aren't like me, who are from a different, just have different cultural touch points, mm-hmm. different upbringing. So, like in a sense, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe that's happening for others. I know for me, um, you know, it's it's definitely helping me to be able to love my neighbor and mm-hmm. and walk amongst my neighbors. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. So I feel like I'm getting I'm getting the benefit. Yeah, of this. I love that. Yeah. All right, gentlemen. Thank you very much for coming over here tonight. We just add, yeah. we just add one more yeah, thing. Please, Get man. some. The parable of the sower. You know, I believe life in 
every interaction, at least in my my opinion, is an opportunity to sow seed. Now, whether you know it or not, you're sowing a seed. You know, like it's not up to you to water it. Holy Spirit does that, um, and God gets the increase. Um, I've had my my train of thought change also from being with people who aren't like me. Lived in rural Texas. They call themselves redneck. You know, like some of the, you know, best and most funnest people to be around. You know, like they straight shooters, can cook a barbecue better than anybody in the world. Um, and, you know, and I didn't feel any, you know, animosity towards me at all. So um, whether that's a derogatory term, they call themselves that. But, you know, what? But my vision of that term was always like, you know, like somebody who didn't like me. But, that has since changed. Mm-hmm. And so I firmly believe like it should be a part of curriculum for every child to live or go to college somewhere else other than their state where they live. Like, hey, we have a partner with this school in the inner city of this place. Why don't you go spend a semester there? Or why don't you go spend a semester over here? Oh, my gosh. This country would be completely different. Mm-hmm. A, it would look different because people would be marrying different mm-hmm. people, but also – Minds would be changed. Mm-hmm. So it's good. It's good. That's, that's a solid word. That idea yeah. of like sewing. Ooh, yeah. man, that's yeah. so powerful. That's great, man. So powerful. Um, Picks by Shep on Instagram. Picks by Shep. P I X by S H U P. Picks by Stuck. That's right. S T U C. S T U C. And Viz by Mario. V I Z. V I Z. Visual. By Mario. Yeah. Now, you, have you considered picks by Mary? <laughs> <laughs> we try, we're trying. We had this discussion. <laughs> oh, you have? Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, you can change the name on an Instagram account without oh, yeah. messing anything up, now. right? Yeah, you can. What happens if he has, as, um, if you change it and then someone goes to, uh, you know, and clicks on the, the tag from like three months ago? It Does won't it? Work. I think it it's won't work. Like yeah, user it won't not work. found. Or yeah. uh, user okay. Not found. Okay. Yeah. So it doesn't trans, it doesn't. I wish it did, but yes. Yeah, Instagram is not, apparently not that uh, advanced. Forward yeah, thinking. forward yep. thinking. Yeah, yep. or somebody else took it. Yeah, like yep. too. Um, anything else you guys wanted to say before we wrap up here? This was great, man. Thank yeah, you. Thank you yeah, for, thank for having, having us. Yeah, this yeah, was bro, fun. This thank is you really guys, good, man. Great awesome. combo. Appreciate yeah. it. All right. Good night, everybody. Try to catch me